Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka. 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 It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and you guessed it. It's Baka Baka Baka. You, you guessed hardcore history. No, we're we're the anime podcast that we talk about anime after two weeks and watching all these episodes. We talk about like a book club. Did you download Hardcore History? All right. Well, look, we're not Dan Carlin, but we are Baka Baka Baka, the anime podcast. And today we are talking about the second half of Ranking of Kings. That is our discussion in our book club format. Before we turn our conversation over to you in the comments section so you can tell us why we're right, why we're wrong, or just argue with us in general, whatever you want to do. To help me talk about episodes 12 through 23, I need the help of my co-host. And first off, we have the big bad wolf to my red riding hood. It's Jeremy. How you doing? Oh. <laughs> awesome. Go full ham here. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing good. Um, Tanya's been on a period drama binge, but uh, I suggested a certain period drama show to watch that I've never seen before, but I've always wanted to. And yeah, she was all right with it. And we watched the whole thing, and it was awesome. And it's called Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. <laughs> that was so cool. Like, those are not regular zombies. Uh, I got a kick out of the formula because, you know, you, you're so used to getting the, the brainless zombies that just, you know, at best you get 28 days later where they just chase you down like maniacs. But but these things, you know, they, they talked. And uh, <laughs> they made plans. Um, plus it was really funny because we had just, cause you know, I sit at this computer and she sits there and watches these shows. So I can't avoid them. <laughs> like, like if Fright and Prejudice is playing, I hear the entire script. Um, and so I just heard that and to hear this variation of it was fun. It was really fun. I got an absolute kick out of it. I, I didn't think that the, uh, the lead author, not lead author, the lead actor was going to grow on me. Uh, Darcy, just because his voice was really rough on the ears, but uh, but he he did it, it wound up being really cool. And by the end of it, I was I was thinking, okay, I, I, that voice kind of sounds like Darcy to me now, <laughs> which is the weirdest thing. He had a smoker's voice, um, but yeah, that was uh, it was a good show. I highly I, recommend it. I was a hundred percent sure you were gonna say, yeah, we watched Bridgerton. Oh God, she started Bridgerton. <laughs> And then she was like, oh, yeah, no, this isn't for me. <laughs> got to get to the banging. The that's where she got to. Oh, okay. She, yeah, she got to the banging and she's like, okay, so that's what this show's about? Okay. Never that's mind. where I checked in. I sat down my pop would go on. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> all right. Let's also hear from the little baby bear to my Goldilocks. It's Jason. How you doing? Oh. <laughs> um. He's That's just it. right. I yeah, just right. That was pretty good. Um I watched uh The Lost City with my wife, uh with Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. Um delightful. Yeah. Like I do not like rom coms, and this was spot on. That's uh good. Brad Pitt did a fantastic like twenty minute job. <laughs> and I think what I really enjoyed about the movie is watching them act. It looked like everyone was having the time of their lives. Like this did not look like something that was extremely difficult to film uh, as far as for the actors. And there wasn't a ton of special effects, uh, but there were enough to keep, um, you know, someone like me engaged. And uh, the story was fun. Uh, you know, I had a little bit of a sappy ending, uh, as all rom-coms do. But uh, yeah, it was, it's really fun. The comedy was pretty spot on in that one. I was really impressed. Um, also tried out a free game called Muck. Um, if you like beating your face against a, <laughs> against a very tough game over and over again. It's very roguelike. Uh, you might like it. Yeah. Well, what's the concept? It, it It's funny. It, it actually came up from a Reddit argument. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, you can't make your own game. Oh, yeah. And so uh, it's 
it's it's kind of risk of rainish in the fact that the difficulty escalates as monsters spawn, but it's got very Minecraft mechanics in that you have to craft weapons and armor as fast as you can in order to keep up with the with the scaling. Interesting. Okay. So um yeah, it's it's pretty fun. It it almost the graphics look like a totally accurate accurate battle simulator. Oh sweet. <laughs> so, you know. All the guys look a little stretching out all over the place. Yeah, but yeah, it's it. It's a lot more fun with friends. Let me tell you. Sweet. Of course, rubbing two sticks together is better with friends. So I have to get me some of those. Those sound fun. (laughs) Uh, My name is Troy. Uh, It's been three weeks since we recorded, so a lot has happened. Moon Knight ended. The first two episodes of Kenobi have aired. Star Wars celebrations going on, so I'm giddy like a schoolchild. I saw Doctor Strange. It was good. It was fine. I, I hear there's a lot of controversy with it. Not the usual type. <laughs> there's there's a character that people love that uh, they're not going to love choices they made with the character. Uh, what I really want to report back on is more, I've said it on this show that every couple months, maybe once, twice a year, I go back and try Bloodborne, and I get to What's well, technically the first half to beat boss, but the second boss you usually end up running into, and he whoops my butt, and I get pissed, and I delete the game, and I go play Call of Duty or something. Well, <laughs> I beat him for the first time in three years, <laughs> and now I'm in the final stage. Rom the Spider is dead, so if you know Bloodborne, you know I'm I'm getting close. I still have a few bosses to go through. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Wow, it what you. a great game. It hooked you. Uh, it is, you know, I started playing it as an RPG. I was like, oh, I should just like level up and get health and make this easy on myself and grind. If I can do it in a JRPG for two hours, why not just do it here? And, and I did. And now I'm good at it. I've beaten <laughs> bosses in single tries and. Oh, that technique actually works. You can you can grind enough to make the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do that in any Souls game. Oh, maybe they I'll just, have to revisit them. They just don't tell you about it. You have to literally talk to a certain character, and they'll be like, "Hey, do you want to put you know level up your stats?" Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> make me stronger. And, and you know you have to be careful because even the lowest minions can kill you if you're not careful. But you get very practiced at beating them when you've been grinding for an hour. That's you know true. their move set, and so you just go beat them over and over again, build up your souls, and get three or four levels. Then you go fight the boss, and hey, he's not as hard. <laughs> My favorite moment, I think, was when you sent us the picture of that barn, and I looked at it, and I go, I know for a fact, I've never played Bloodborne, and I have not seen this building, but I know for a fact there are at least two dudes hiding behind those half walls, <laughs> ready to jump at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my favorite thing about the game. I am this now powerful warrior. I have taken down monsters that are the size of Cthulhu. It doesn't matter. I'll fight anything. And I still, every once in a while, scream <laughs> in terror as a jump scare. Uh, invisible tentacle monsters grabbing you. Uh, it, it, it is a great, great game. Uh, obviously, that's not exactly a hot take, but I'm happy to say I, I am a hunter now. Awesome. I was, I was hoping to be done for the podcast, but... Uh, I started doing side quests and oh, no, you know how it is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. We have a lot to say about ranking of Kings part two. So we should get to that. That is what we're talking about. Again, this is episodes 12 through 23. We covered the first half in our last podcast. Um, we will get to a spoiler section uh, soon and we'll be spoiling everything. But for now, we're just going to keep this non spoiler. So we're going to do. Some early quick reviews for you. Jeremy, why don't you share your review of this half of Ranking of Kings? So if you liked the sort of Game of Throny, Dark Souls, Brothers Grimm sort of tone that was set in the first half, and that's what you're coming to the second half for, you might not enjoy it as much. Um, to me, it came off very much as a different tone. Uh, a lot more traditional, perhaps, or tropey. Um, things that 
were really surprising me in the first half. They just didn't repeat those surprises anymore. Um, I guess you could say in a way they did because the, the change of tone was surprising. <laughs> but, um, but without spoiling anything, you know, the, the best I can, I can say is that it was very unsatisfying for what I'd been given up to this point. All right, Jason, your thoughts. Um, I think one of the frustrating things I had with this anime is they threw out about three or four different storylines that I was more interested in than the storyline that they were telling. Um, and I was not satisfied with how they went about telling that story. And I kind of, you mentioned it in our text a while back that, you know, there, there's a couple scenes where, you know, this anime basically has its cake and eats it too. That can definitely be a good thing. Um, in this case, I didn't feel like it was. Uh, it, and it made things feel a bit empty. And uh, I just didn't... They're trying... Th there's some scenes that make it feel like almost a mature anime. And then they have a bunch of scenes where I feel like I'm watching a uh, early 2000s kids show. So it, I, I did not find myself enjoying the anime. So that leaves me alone and the only person who still really enjoyed it. However, I will say with the caveat, uh, a lot of the the issues that Jeremy and Jason have with it, um, I, I agree, are there. Uh, I do think there was some mis I don't know, there are missteps in the overall storytelling. I think there are choices and they and I can respect the choices and I can even understand the choices. But I do think the story suffers overall from it. It didn't ruin any of my enjoyment for it. I thought this was a really good payoff to the first half setup. Um, I really saw this as, you know, one big epic confrontation that stretches over a bunch of episodes. And I, I think it all takes place in a day, maybe two at most. Um, I, I really enjoyed the pacing. I've also been watching like Attack on Titan season one, and the pacing has just been so atrocious female titan chasing you through the forest for 20 straight minutes of you wondering should we keep running or should we go back should we keep <laughs> running or should we go back just pick please pick please just end the episode um season two is really good by the way i have the pacing changed much better in fact thing so watching this i felt like this is great i'm getting payoff episode after a off episode after episode i'm getting payoff uh stories Strings are tying together. Story arcs are completing. Uh, resolutions happening. And I, I felt it actually resolved most of its storytelling with leaving a few seeds for, for a second season. I very much was into this. But I have a lot to defend. <laughs> uh, based on early conversations, like Jason pointed out, we've had some text message conversations just testing the temperature of the room. And uh, I'm alone here. Yeah. <laughs> so feel free to use that comment section to tell us. Tell us how uh, wrong we are. <laughs> Defend Troy. Uh, yep. No. Uh, feel free to absolutely disagree with me as well. I don't mind being piled on. That is what this uh, podcast is for. Yeah, we all just take turns. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Honestly, sometimes I prefer to be in the minority because I feel bad when I'm in the on the, the two of you <laughs> one like. Uh, he's he's all alone defending himself. And that was Jason <laughs> last week being like, no, nah, I yep. didn't like it, guys. And we were like, no, you're so wrong. There's two of us. There's one of you. You can't That's be right. right. <laughs> uh, exactly. It is good. It shifts around. Uh, yeah. So now let's talk about the opening and the closing. Should we introduce our... Not till we get to the spoiler section. Oh, you are right. My bad. Uh, I thought they were fantastic. I love both of them. The, the uh, OP is... The, the song is a banger and the, uh, the animation is, is in quality from the first half, I felt was a step up. And I really liked the story beats they hit. The, it, and then the ending was nice. So I, no complaints for either. Yeah, I got nothing to add. They were good. I saw someone make a Reddit comment that said this was done by the same guy who did the Jujutsu Kaisen Part 2 OP. And now I can't unsee it. The, the style <laughs> is almost perfectly matched, even the song choice. Uh, I get emotional at the song. The words they choose, like, oh, man, it, it, it took a week off and now I can't remember. Turn away from 
the malice that gives you strength or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so good at dipping into the, the, the thematic. There's a shot, the, the first person shot of someone falling off a cliff, like literally diving over and you go with the person's first person view, falling, getting caught and then showing so beautifully done. Uh, if nothing else, this is a really great OP. I, I, I yeah. uh, the ED I liked, uh, it made more sense once the show was over. Uh, and, and I honestly did skip it a couple times, which I don't usually do, or I didn't pay attention because it, it didn't have a lot. It was just a very simple, almost like a, Hey, here's a recap of things, of <laughs> events. Here's a little synopsis of characters in the show. And, um, but yeah. then once the series was over and I look back at it, I'm like, Oh, I, I like that as a little, little tag so all right now it's time to talk about our next anime this is jason's pick it is called the genius prince's guide to raising a nation out of debt it is about a genius prince's guide to raising a nation out of debt because nowadays animes will just tell you what they're about instead of actually having a title (laughs) yeah no more purple elephant titles no, it's a it's about a prince who inherits a kingdom and he wants to sell it off so he can go retire in the lap of luxury. But he ends up just making the kingdom better and better. Uh, and the people think he's just the best ever is, is the concept like, I got from thinking this I'm awesome. <laughs> is, is this an isekai or is it uh, no. he's from this world? No, it's OK. OK, because I thought I saw an isekai story that was similar to that, like a synopsis that. There is an isekai about a guy who comes to a kingdom and then uses economics to yes. modern economics to fix the kingdom. Uh, okay, I thought that's what this was. Okay, cool. This is the very unique anime of he's <laughs> from this world and doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the untold story. <laughs> All right, and now we're going on to spoilers for Ranking of Kings. Again, spoilers also probably cover the first half as we discuss things. So if you haven't seen the, if you're some reason like I'm gonna spoil the second half, but then watch the first half and be surprised, that'd be weird. But you do you. But know that this is the spoiler section for all of Ranking of Kings at this point. Uh, first spoiler: the Ranking of Kings part is probably three minutes long throughout this whole runtime. Yeah, pretty much pointless. <laughs> I would it's not agree, pointless. I would agree to you until the second to last episode in the final moments, and also a little bit of wiki reading. <laughs> about the beast remember the beast king i already told you guys the beast king being the dad dad right yeah yeah. dad because he became the number one king and now he's insane and that the ranking of kings some i have a theory i didn't actually read this my my theory is the gods use the ranking of kings to keep humans under their feet like you get to number one we drive you insane you're out the door time for the next number one you'll never rise over a certain power level i agree with you because i think I think they're doing it because they're they've either lost or are continuing to lose their power because they mentioned that earlier uh, when boss started his conquest. Um, And so, yeah, I think because they're losing or lost, they're like, yeah, let's well, it's the strongest dudes. Let's make sure they go insane. So as far as like a conspiracy of this world, I actually I kind of dig it. But but as far as in this storyline, yeah, you're you're right. There's the rankings don't super matter <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> not till the very last scene but you could say thematically yeah. what is the value the value of a king and we should we we should we need to clarify from last time we weren't 100 sure what the ranking was it's the strength of the king it's the economy and it's the strength of the people in the kingdom like how many powerful fighters you have and it, and like the big four from last time those would count into your ranking not just Hey, I have 12 random farmers. Yeah, they don't matter. They're not going to fight. How many guys can control stinks in this kingdom? Oh, that one guy. Okay, well, that's going to help the ranking. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, because the f- there's a scene where a guy's like, no, we're, we're fixing this character. He's like, oh, well, then you won't be number one because that'll lower your ranking. He's like, oh, so if I keep him, if I keep him the way he is, I count as number one. <laughs> All right. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. We're just... Jason threw us off track. Uh, sorry about that. What was that? Yep. No worries about it. We're going to jump. Before we jump into story, we're going to jump into characters. We're going to go through a bunch of characters, uh, hit them one at a time, and then we'll just go through story. Does that work for you guys? Yep. Sounds good to me. 
especially since our main characters don't actually start in this part of the story. They they come in a few episodes later. So we'll start with our our main boy, Boji. Who's going first? Okay. Um <laughs> So, uh Boji he was oh God. It's it's been a while. I haven't even I, I didn't think about him because he was not my favorite character at all. Um he was okay. He had like it was cool seeing the resolution of his story and it was nice to see that he actually was capable of running a kingdom for a little bit of time. Um I recently learned that Boji is supposedly possibly 17, which blew me away. I never imagined for a moment that yeah, no official age. That's just like yeah, an assumption of fans. Exactly. Yeah. But that never even occurred to me. I, I imagined that he was somewhere around like 13. Um, so that, that was, that was interesting. Um, I thought there were some odd things about how at the end when he became king for a short period of time and how that affected relationships and stuff. Uh, but I guess we can hit that once we get there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, his incessant crying was annoying this time. Um, and I think it was entirely because everybody started crying so much that it wasn't really a unique to Boji thing with like a, occasional spatterings of it elsewhere. The crying was used to essentially like that was the big emotion that, that they were, that they were using to try and appeal to people. Um, or to get you involved in the anime. That's what they were trying to elicit a response. That was the method they used to elicit that response so many times that when Boji started doing it, again, I was just kind of getting annoyed at that point. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure you guys must have some, some good things to say about him. And I'm sure I'll remember them as you say them, but I can't think of anything good right now. <laughs> um, I thought Boji. I, throughout the first set half and this half, I'd rather like the theme of his character arc. I like that we've got someone who's built, been dealt a really bad hand, and if hadn't have been dealt that hand, they would have been a big, strong, powerful person in this world. Um, and I like the idea that we're going to take something that he's good at and make him one of the most powerful beings in this world. Uh, and, you know, uh, Moranjo told, uh, died of that last season or not season, but a half. Um, and I liked that he was continuing on this goal of becoming King and taking over for his dad and, you know, surpassing his dad. Um, I just thought the execution was awful. Um, I did not like his, his fight scenes were good. The, the, like objectively with, like if you were to take just the moments of combat, they were all really good. Um, I didn't have any complaints about him fighting Oaken, his dad, uh, Despa. I don't know. Despa. You had a complaint. Um, huh? You had one complaint about how which, he fought his dad. Which no, no, we'll no. Get to. no, no. I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about the the actual technical part and yeah. the. But when we get there, I'll tell you my issues with that scene and the <laughs> storytelling part of it. Okay. I'm talking about Boji specifically and his combat was just done really nice. well. Mm -hmm. I just think his story execution not only was the crying incessant, but he. You, one moment he has backbone, the next moment he doesn't. The one moment he's uh, he's losing control of his emotions, the next moment he's this happy little kid. I just there wasn't a lot of consistency, and uh, I found his him frustrating from that aspect. Boji <laughs> is the best character in anime best ever. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's not. Um. I also want to make a disclaimer. Uh, some of these characters could leak into like issues we want to talk about. I say we argue when we're in the plot, uh, okay. and and not on the character. We'll just focus on just Boji's character arc. Uh, but I don't want to like give excuses now for story plots. Cool, cool. Yeah, uh, I shall restrain myself. 
<clears throat> Boji does cry a lot. Jeremy's absolutely right. It doesn't bother me, but I knew it would bother him. That's that's just a taste thing. But he does cry a lot. So if that does bother you, absolutely, that's that's correct. Uh, I really like the continued work on his empathy uh, and examining it. I really en- see where, where you complained about his his the way he switches back and forth. I, I love that they explored his self-confidence and how it's just gone. I could not stop thinking and Jeremy nailed something so, so well in our last podcast when he's like, they didn't train him to be a king. And that, that kind of blindsided me in that episode. And, and we talked about it a little bit. Then we moved on. And, I, and when I edited it, it hit me again. And I'm like, he's so right. But it wasn't Boji. It was them. No one believed he could be king. And then Boji, that's inside him now. And we, there is even a character who points it out to, you know, I took away his confidence. He mm. is the most powerful character in this anime now. And he doesn't believe it. Even when he's kicking butt, he doesn't believe it. And it makes the other character, the other character has no purpose except for that. And he's literally a cheerleader who's like, if you're not here, this all falls apart. Um, which is funny because, you know, he was just a mouthpiece. And we'll talk about him in a second. But I did. I enjoyed that exploration of the importance of self-confidence. You know, you look at guys like Michael Jordan who are like, yeah, the greatest player alive. Michael Jordan also believes he's the greatest player alive. And if he didn't, <laughs> he probably wouldn't be half as good as he actually is. It's true. Uh, um, so I, I just en- enjoyed exploring that. There. <sighs> I don't have a problem with some of the story beats but we'll get there when we get there i i i found boji i still find him charming uh and his face when he gets excited is is almost second to none in anime as far as characters who just light light up (laughs) and i love the voice i do i just (laughs) when he when he comes up and he tells you he's gonna kill the demon but he just says blah 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 (laughs) Uh, um it works for me it just it, it, it it still clicked for me could oh, you yeah. could you elaborate on what you mean by uh, how his theme is empathy? Because I still don't see it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't want to go too much into story, but okay. The the example I would give would be the the beast, the assassin beast that they're fighting in the beginning, and he gets there, uh, uh, and oh, he's like, "Hey, heal these heal these bad guys." Um, he actually. It's not him getting empathy. He's acting as like a way for other people to learn empathy. Right, right. And okay, I misunderstood. He's, he's, that's he's, how I understood it as well. He's Jeremy. not, yeah, he's not okay. doing an arc where he discovers empathy. That's actually Dida. Um, he is a character who's so, and he's empathy in, in human form, right? So that other mm, characters are gotcha. making, are choosing to forgive, probably even when they shouldn't. <laughs> They're almost going too far. Yes. But that, that is his impact on the story is, is okay. he, and because of that, he becomes more powerful. He gets allies just because he's the king who doesn't kill, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I I enjoyed where they set that up in the first half and then seeing that payoff, seeing guys like, you know, I must wear loyal to this kid. He's dope. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you then. Um, you saw it with the snake. Uh, you, you saw it with... Uh, yeah, pretty much every. That was one of the things that I was I was saying when Tanya and I were watching like the beginning of the second half. She didn't stick with it the whole thing. She got really tired of it. Um, but uh, when he did eventually get his like retinue of beast characters, and, and I was like, okay, so he's just gonna save everybody, every single character. He's just gonna save them. Doesn't matter if they're a bad guy. Doesn't matter if they're a wild beast. <laughs> doesn't matter. They're all gonna value that Boji saved us, and that just touched our hearts. But <laughs> But I do agree with you. I totally see where he's ex- he is showing real empathy and other people are learning it from him. That's cool. All right. So next up, we have Kage, who uh, learned the thousand years of death t- jutsu. <laughs> he eats you. <laughs> no, a thousand years of death is from Naruto where you do this and you poke upward. <laughs> that? Okay. Okay. Now- Two fingers <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up because I heard there was a, a a video I was watching where they were talking about what it's like if you are a uh, English teacher substituting in Japan. And that apparently is something that you have to be very wary of because the little kids, 
will run up behind you and they think it's a funny game. They'll put their fingers together <laughs> and they will poke you in the butt, like in the butt. Yeah. And, that, yeah. It, in Naruto and like their for one of the first training arcs when they meet their, their teacher, he's like thousand years of death. And he does that to Naruto and sends them flying with that move. Yep. Apparently okay. that's, that's just a thing that's that the part kids of their do culture. over there. That's yeah. Nice. And, they think it's really funny, and it's super, super embarrassing and painful, I guess. All right. Uh, thoughts on the figure eight with eyeballs? I He didn't have a ton of differentiation between the first half and second half for me. His relationship grew stronger. Him taking off at the end it made zero sense. Totally agree. Um, and it was completely out of left field to me. Um, he mentioned it a couple times throughout the anime of like, you know, what's going to happen when he's king? He's not going to have time for me. Um, but if, like without trying at all, he take and it just felt like, uh, oh, we need to set up the next season. So we're just going to throw this in. Yeah, it was the most irritating thing to me. Um, I loved his when he's in the boat. And hit him like the animation for a blob with two eyes <laughs> conveying the feeling of uh, being torn between living and dying and mom and Boji and like responsibility. And, you know, uh, was that scene was really well done. It was it was one of my favorites. Hmm. But uh yeah, I, I don't have a ton of extra thoughts on Kage, except for at the end, uh, I lost all respect for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Um, yeah, we already mentioned how basically he act, uh, acted as a mouthpiece for Boji in the first half, and he just kept doing that. But then this time he shifted, like you were saying, Troy, into a sort of uh, support role. Other than that, like I was really kind of hoping that they would do something with him uh tell more about his story i really want to know what his people are i'm very curious and uh, and because i mean when you look at him and you consider normal beast races that are sapient in other stories they're generally speaking pretty close to human when it comes to their anatomy and they're you know usually humanoid Right. So to see this thing that is just basically a pancake uh, on the ground, I am super, super curious. I want to know more about their history and who they are. But they didn't they didn't really touch that at all. Um, well, except for the fact that their bodies can make a portal to the underworld. Yeah, that was. Mm. <laughs> yep. Yep. But well, that just makes me want to know even more. Right. But yeah. He was he was a very empty character for me. I, I one one other thing like it, it was frustrating like he was accepted by not only the court but also Hilla Hilla healing Hilla mm-hmm. healing 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 um she accepted him and he still was like oh poor me yeah. so was, that was my final complaint I I enjoyed his role in the story uh, that he wasn't just a mouthpiece anymore I enjoyed the I like how they made why is he important to be there. Uh, which I kind of already talked about with Boji. I was disappointed that we never got to really see him serve more of a purpose besides that. Well, he seems like such a useful, and that's that's like a technical. I want to see cool fights level of me. Um, so there is a little bit of disappointment that like he didn't strike from the shadow or he could get inside someone's armor or do something cool like that. Uh, he does have one moment, and I'm like, oh, here it comes, and then they're yeah. like, no, nah, not actually. <laughs> um, We'll talk about the the other thing when we get to it. Other than I, I, I don't have the same problem. <laughs> okay. Next up, we have. I want to do Queen Hyling. I forgot to put her on the list, guys. Uh, Queen Healing. Mm. Uh, what do you guys think of Queen Healing? Uh, I thought she was great. Um, she had a really, really compelling arc. Um. And I actually don't have any complaints about her. Uh, she solved a lot of the stuff that I didn't like about her from the first half. Um, she still has this royal attitude that she's now attempting to quell. 
Um, and she's seeing the value in not only her subjects, but also in her sons for different reasons. Um, really no complaints about her for me. As far as her character goes, I completely agree. No complaints there. But she sort of served as a uh, deus ex machina to fix everything all the time. No. No. And even even when you no. establish something... <laughs> wrong. <laughs> so so even wrong! When you, even when you establish that something is, you know, works a certain way in a in a in uh, the laws of this universe and story, when you have this keep happening over and over again, it strains credibility that the odds would be, you know, so many critical successes or this character is so far past zero in their mana pool. Um, I did absolutely love that there was a very good reason for her armor to be the way it was. Cause we mentioned that in the first half, we, we were like, what is with that armor? That is so crazy, but it's really cool looking, but it's so weird. And that, that was awesome. Absolutely loved that. Um, but yeah, I have some, I have a lot of complaints about, uh, Queen Healing's healing. <laughs> An ex machina it, it means it was not set up. If you set it up and it pays off, you did it right. And, and they also set up the extra mana boost that they need for her to use later. Eh, not all of them, because she did yeah. it multiple times. Yeah, yeah, no. In, in, back in season one, Kage pulled out those mana bottles and they're like, why do you have yeah. those? He's like, I just stole those. I know, but again, it comes down to straining credibility, credibility because it's one thing after another. Like, whenever you need healing, well, there's Queen Healing to do her healing. What do you do with a white mage? You don't have her attack. You just keep hitting cure. That's literally the role of a white mage. Absolutely. But is this Game of Thrones slash Dark Souls slash Brothers Grimm, or is this safe space anime where nobody dies? First one. No, it's not, because really? nobody dies. I mean, there, people die, just not any main characters. <laughs> no, <laughs> even red shirts, I'm, if I remember. I'm okay. <laughs> I, 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 I partially, I, I see where Jeremy's coming from, but I partially disagree, because it's like, if you've got a fantasy world, and you've got, and you've established that I have so much mana I can use until I'm out, but I have potions that refill that mana... Who am I to complain cool. if she pulls him out from Kage or pulls him out from underneath her armor? I I totally agree that they did set they set it up that it could be done. But then where are the stakes? Like what's the point? Why did you uh, okay, put and that's these a fair people criticism. in these situations where you're yeah. telling me that there's danger and that people are gonna die if you're just gonna have Queen Magic Healing show up and even in the very end where she isn't even there, but the prop by proxy, she still heals them because it's her bloodline. Well, they, they her establish son's all mages. Magic. They establish all mages can do that. But you're absolutely right. He specifically calls out, "It must be the blood I inherited from Queen Healing." Well, right. there, because because there's a race that can do that, and that's her race. Right, but the point is, it's yes. not anyone else. It's her son. So by Hold proxy, on. might as well just be her. So does that mean healing and healing and Moranjo are from the same clan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, You're absolutely right about the stakes, and we, we we definitely need to get into that. And we said we wouldn't do this, and we're doing it anyway. But we'll get to yeah. we'll get to <laughs> You are 100 percent right about the stakes, but she is not an ex machina. I I refuse to accept that. They they took away the stakes by her being there, but they did set her up. They did establish it. That is the rules of this universe. And they they okay. even they even set up the extra bottle she uses later, um, and then other healing that's done by other characters of the same race isn't her. But they've established okay, Miranda's mother could do this. That their race could do this. Yeah, they but they I'll did give you that. remove stakes. You're that's right. fair enough. Okay. King Best Boss? character in an anime ever. <laughs> no. I, I just love the complexity of healing. Uh, this anime does have some characters that are so complex, I don't understand their choices. But healing is one of the complex characters that 
every time she did something, I was like, that's so her. <laughs> uh, you know, she's she, she'd come up even at the end. She's still mocking Boji like you're not supposed to do it like this. But then we <laughs> see that she's like, nope, nope, I have changed. I have gotten better. Uh, even to the point where the uh, in the end, she's like, execute that person i swear i'd be a better person but we need to execute <laughs> uh i love that i love that she didn't just completely change that she recognizes i need to change but is struggling with it beautiful beautiful character growth i did so I love, love the apologize for me because <laughs> yes. i'm not gonna do it yeah and yeah. that's when, when i talk about the complexity it's the treating her subjects like like tools but then as soon as they're in danger risking her own life to get them out like really to risk she tries to save what we see as a red shirt um even though an episode ago in the back in the last core she was like hurry up even though i'm on a horse <laughs> you know she, she she's trying to act royal and being a total jerk about it but actually does have a true good person inside her behind that that she has to kind of work through okay yeah. Uh, King Boss. And let's try to save our arguments for the story. <laughs> I, from what they set up in the first half, I have kind of no complaints, which, uh, okay, I have story beat complaints I will save. As far as a character, uh, I kind of liked the subterfuge that he was going through along I I love the scene where he rips open the cage or his cell door and he's like no not yet and he turns around and he goes sits back down like there's just this illusion that he's actually in jail um but uh yeah I I I like the underpinnings of the story that they're attempting to tell I just didn't I, I guess I didn't like the way they told it. And also I didn't like the way that everything kind of unraveled. But the package that was given as far as King Boss, no problems with. Well, I agree that he is consistent. Um, you know, he was the character that he started out as. We just had to figure out who that was. Um, but what I see in him is that type of enabler that is the most feared of enablers where you have a person who uh say is a drug addict or something you he knew that they were good before they became a drug addict and so he's just hoping that at some point they'll turn around so you know he's not really doing anything but maybe admonishing them lightly and handling them with kid gloves well they steal everything from his house and sell it to get money to, to buy drugs, right? I know that's not a one-to-one -one comparison here, but I think it's the same on. sort of... It's the same sort of enabling, mm -hmm. where, you know, he feels bad for what Moranjo has been through, and it is terrible. It was atrocious. It never should have happened. But that didn't... That doesn't grant her... Uh, freedom from the consequences of doing the things that she winds up doing. And we saw what some of those were in the first half, and we could see a lot more of them here. And so the type of character that he plays is the type of character that I just, I really hate that character. <laughs> because it's it's something that is such a, like, you know that the person has the best of intentions, and this is that case where the best of intentions you know that the road to hell is paved in good intentions. This is this is that case, and so it's um, I I I think that they did a good job making him consistent and explaining that this is his perspective. Um, but man, he's horrible. He's horrible. Well, I mean, he's he he's got blood on his hands too. Um, oh, big time. Mm -hmm. I think I think one of the th weird thing this anime does this a lot. Um. He finds her as a small child, I assume anywhere from five to eight. She's probably Raise... 17. She looks like she's both. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Basically <laughs> raises her and th there's never a real official implied relationship with right. them. But then it is implied. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know how to feel about their relationship. 
Well, how the heck did he even conceive Dida? I still don't I don't, get that. I'm not sure that's... We're not supposed to talk about yeah. that. <laughs> we took a vow. <laughs> so did he. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the idea of raising your girlfriend. That's right, kind of yeah. weird. <laughs> that is weird. Unless it's an anime. <laughs> and you find her in a dumpster or something. I remember he called together. her... I see her as mother and daughter. Did he ever... When was it applied? They he were said lovers. Three things. He said three. I swear. Uh, maybe he did. I might have like went down for a note, knowing me. Uh, um, I'm actually more. I almost completely agree with Jeremy here. Uh, he's he's very frustrating. Uh, being an enabler and, and being an antagonist as enabler, that's actually something unique. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that. Um, but his refusal to communicate. Nothing just frustrates me more than, you know, if you just said a sentence out loud, so many issues would be resolved. <laughs> like, just surprised he didn't cry. <laughs> just tell someone, just be like, hey, just so you guys know, this is what's going on. Yeah. And, <sighs> it's OK. So I from a place of charity here, <laughs> I feel like boss's actions within Dida specifically. I'm talking about post Dida. Um, from before, that's that's a whole another problem, and I agree with Jeremy 100%. Once he's in Dida's body, it seems like he's a af- he's afraid of what Moranjo will do if he crosses her or attempts to stop her, because we know that you know from her deal with the devil, she's I, I don't think it's just the mirror that makes her immortal. I think she's just immortal at this point. Um, so he can't just go smash the mirror. He needs to convince Moranjo that she's lost her way. He's, and so her, her, his actions are consistent with attempting to manipulate her from the back. That's why he gives Domus the secret instructions. Right. Well, so what, what do you think? He's, what is he afraid of her killing him? Uh, no, I think he's afraid of her losing it and just murdering everyone. Isn't that what she's already doing? Mm-hmm. No. You're thinking bigger scope worldwide. Yeah. Okay. Her her whole plan is to wipe out the entire kingdom. Mm-hmm. No, she wants to kill Hilling. No, the whole nope. kingdom. She states it twice. Oh, the whole kingdom. Okay. Because then he doesn't have a kingdom to run, and he can go on adventures. That's right. She's got to take her boyfriend on adventures. Um. But perhaps she might have escalated, right? She had all those monsters down below. She wasn't using. This seemed to be kind of a slow burn thing where she was attempting to get everyone in the same spot. You know, let's see. So here, here's, here's but I could my, be reading too much into it. Here's my whole issue. I found him inconsistent because he's like, oh, I'm secretly keeping these people alive from the shadows. I've got plans. I got wheels in motion to keep things in place. And then at the end, he's like, I'm going to anyone who stands in my way, I'm killing like you're either on mirror side or you're dead. And then I'm like, is he faking it? And then and then he literally says like, ah, at least I'll kill Boji quick. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh no, he's he's all he in. <laughs> yeah, he's like I I I've taken the mirror side. What was the point of all the machinations to stop her if you were on her side? He he he's so flip-floppy the whole yeah. time. Well, go ahead. And I'm guessing it's just more of the enabling, right? Like, yes. Right. He, Like he says, it's at the very end, you've finally come to your senses. That's all that it was ever for. His machinations weren't to save those people. It wasn't to, to no, preserve anything. No, it was to get anything. her to come to her senses. It was to get her to come to her senses, and that was the sole reason. But he also still goes through the act of healing everybody. Yeah, a- because... After knocking them into a pile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if he, if he doesn't have to kill them, they might still be useful in bringing that, bringing her to her senses, you know, and maybe, maybe if he doesn't have to kill them, he would rather not for sure. But I don't think that's his priority. I think that's a second priority. I I guess, I I guess the, in the word he, he, of all the characters, this is the one that I found frustrating of all the people Mm. making decisions, even Moranjo, like her, her reason is a little weird. It's just like, that. that's kind of silly. (laughs) <laughs> to do yeah, she makes no sense. Oh, we'll get it. We're, she's next. Okay. But at least she was consistent. She was like, I want to do this one thing, and I have this goal. Boss, to me, just it was frustrating. 
Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Moranjo. I hate Moranjo. <laughs> Please I continue. I hate Moranjo. <laughs> and here, okay, here's the reason why I hate Moranjo. I think she made a very good villain. I think that her machinations were were very much in the fairy tale camp of I'm evil for evil's sake, right? We didn't know what her motivations were. She just wanted to burn everything to the ground. And that fit the Brothers Grimm kind of storytelling that they were seemed like they were going for. But instead, they switched to this, everybody's an underdog, everybody's morally gray, everybody's to be empathized with and to be redeemed. So the, go ahead. I, 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 I came up with internally, everyone's no one's a villain, everyone's a victim. Yes, exactly. Uh, perfectly put. Everybody's a victim. And so now they give her this backstory where she's a victim. And... That's that's great. You can give you can give a villain a backstory where they're a victim, and then you can have that villain vil, villain that villain go through a redeeming arc. That has been done before. That does make sense. I could see that working. But the type of character they portrayed her as in her backstory was so good, withstood so much horrible treatment. Had her hands cut off as a little kid. Had her face um, skinned. Okay, like the things she went through are unbelievable. Watched her mother die, or at least knew that her mother died in the same house. Um, like this is traum traumatic stuff. Like as a little kid, she would be so traumatized, and it does show that where she's like she walks to the cliff's edge, she wants to commit suicide. He and King Boss saves her in that flashback, right? So she's messed up, but she deals with it. She conquers it. To the point where she's an adult. She has an adult's body and things are going well and she's living with King Boss, right? And she's still doing good things, right? Like she's not, we're not seeing any indications that she's wavering or that she has some kind of malevolence or mischievousness. Nothing. At worst, she errs on the side of protecting King Boss when he's going to go out to fight again because she gives him enemies that are easy for him to dispatch, right? So she's even trying to protect him. She There's no indication that she would suddenly flip-flop, right? If all she cares about is King Boss, she's suddenly going to flip-flop and say, I'm going to kill all these people because they're in my way. And we even get a flashback of King Boss, like, in absolute anguish over the death of his wife. And, and she's there to, to witness that. And none of it phases her. Like, this is not the same character. This is not the character that we saw uh, go through all those horrible things and then still be a good person. Suddenly they become a murderous, I'm going to wipe out the entire kingdom just just so I can get back out on the road with my buddy. Um, and I know that it's supposed to be this selfless thing where she's not doing it for her, she's doing it for him because she wants to help him realize his dream. But it just, I'm, I'm going to do a really hard, strong take here. It's garbage. Her, her story, her backstory, and the way that they told her story, it's garbage. Um, she is unbelievable as that backstory does not equal this villain. It just doesn't work. And then the way that they redeemed her is just a whole nother can of worms I'm not, I'm not going to get into right now. <laughs> For me, I'm actually pretty happy with her backstory if she had stayed a villain. Like, her, she had something tragic happen, and she kind of goes good. But, I mean, if we look at Boss's backstory, he's a bad guy, too. Like, sure, he's trying to be the strongest, and, you know, but he he murders a lot of people. Like, he both of these people are bad people. Um. Yeah. And so, and then she, you know, uh, introduces him to uh, get stronger with the demon. He has a change of heart once he has a son. Happy with that. But she gets jealous and she does her murderous rampage. What not would have jealous. made all of all of this great. Well, no, OK, not not particularly jealous. She wanted to make sure he had more children. Right. Hmm. I think what would have changed this for a hundred percent better is if when they put her back in her own body, 
like she was like, and now I'm five times more powerful. And she just <laughs> kills like half of them and then disappears. That would have been amazing. Oh. <laughs> but oh, no, she funny. all of a sudden, oh, I'm a good person again. No, I, I agree with you, Jeremy. That's that's hot garbage. The, mm-hmm. She was not anything but a villain this entire time. Yeah. And the redemption arc was like five minutes. So and, and it was from other people too. Other people are walking up and telling her, well, now you have to live and do good for all the people, you know, to make up for all the bad that you did. And it's like, this isn't coming from her. Like she's not the one that's had this revelation and decided she wants to turn around. No, he only like, had the right are, idea. Are coaxing her? Head. Yes, exactly. Some things you don't come back from. Three things. <laughs> I, got, I got three things we need to address. First, uh, okay. my review of Moranjo. She, she's she's fine. Uh, <laughs> I, what a I, actually, I I actually no. like. I enjoy the theme of no villains, only victims, in the endless cycle. And I that, knew you would like that. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that's my vibe. I like it, and yeah. I like the theme that Boji, being the empathy character who won't kill, who won't slay can break that cycle. Even though he's not the one who does it. <laughs> How's he, how does he break it? By killing his dad? By not killing anyone. Even though technically his dad dies, he's not the one who kills him. And, <laughs> and doesn't he send her to hell right, we'll be because past that. she break, we'll be, yeah. breaks yeah. Past that. Okay. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> First to, to Jeremy's backstory thing. I'm going to, I'm going to say I disagree with you and then I'm going to give you the reason you're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like Be, this. Because it, you already touched on the reason I disagree with you, and it's that the way she meets Boss is him mer- fighting her father and killing him. Yeah. And I think that just plants a whole thing like it's you and me, and, it, and no matter how we're attached to anyone else, they don't matter. Human life doesn't matter. And she is a good person to Boss, but. No, no one else matters. So, yeah, I can kill your wife and I don't feel bad about it. You killed my dad. You didn't feel bad about it. This is just the way this world is. But, well, okay, here's, 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 uh, APS. I'll let you finish, but I, I gotta say something to that afterwards. A- APS doesn't make any sense. No. Cause there, there she was, super kind and, and, and yeah. have empathy towards another character, totally confirming your point. That's mm-hmm. the one, that's the thing that sticks in my craw of like, I could have bought everything with King Boss. Mm-hmm. Why is she so kind to the Spearman? Yeah. And I, I thought it was going to be like machinations and evil, but it wasn't. She actually cared for him. And even when he's like, I'm, I can't be on your side anymore. She's like, all right, well, I'm going to move, move on then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, so you're right. I just don't agree for all the reasons you've listed. <laughs> <laughs> well, my one thing that I wanted to say is that, um, even though King Boss killed her father, King Boss was not educating her for quite some time after that. King Boss was being educated by her mother. He started following them around because he realized and regretted the way that he lived. Right. So but... my assumption was that she learned more from her mother during that time and seeing King Boss learn from her mother. And, I mean, you could argue that it was undone when those people killed her mother and so her mother showed weakness. But... I think that's a stretch. There's nothing in there that's saying that's what happened. Um, well, there, there clearly is a record of, you know, her mother being super generous to everybody and she was repeating that. Like, she was doing the same thing. I think, I think there was. I don't or, remember her. I don't remember her helping anyone after her, her mutilation. Well, I meant before, like when her mother was alive, was wasn't there like maybe maybe I'm misremembering, but I thought there was a shot of her actually being generous or. Oh, I thought she was always just like watching like, oh, you're giving them our food. All right. Huh. I thought she always just looked like kind of shy about it. But there is definitely the theme of I needed to live up to my mother and I didn't. Exactly. And her mother really hammers that home when she sees her in hell <laughs> to <laughs> to Jason. I have no problem with the redemption of her. I do fully agree they did it too fast. And yeah. through other characters telling her that that's also right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I kind of chalked that up to maybe they ran out of time. Yeah, that is that has been a mistake. I um, loved I, I did. I will say I loved that when they like, you can't come over to this side of the river, can you? 
That was a great revolution revelation. Yeah. I like I really like that. That was cool. Her relationship with the demon I really liked. Um and we had talked about the villagers inside her or when Dida like meets all these villagers and her child scarred self and we we're like, What why are the villagers there? Mm-hmm. Because they make up her body. <laughs> Yeah, they literally <laughs> do. Yeah, I, that that clicked in me. Uh, actually, that's today funny. going through my notes, I'm like, oh dang, <laughs> that's, that's why they're so that's mad. Good. They became her spare parts. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, we're gonna do this last three together. So there's the three. We find out our three brothers, King Desha, his younger brother Despa, the Boji's trainer, and then the villain, the youngest brother Oaken. Uh, thoughts on uh, the just the characters. <laughs> uh, I loved all three of them. Um, when I when we got their backstory, I was like, "Where's this anime? This is the one I wanted to watch." This anime they showed you in this anime. This no, was no, anime. no, they gave me a piece of it. I wanted <laughs> I completely because an anime it. about Oaken's slow descent in the madness because of his immortality that is a compelling story. Especially about three brothers who find themselves to be on the quote unquote good side, overthrowing their dad. That is a cool storyline. It is a cool storyline. It's in this anime. (laughs) For like four seconds. It's it's a flashback in this anime. Right. I I want a full fledged anime on that. (laughs) I don't think the theme resonates hard enough. Um, There's not enough empathy. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I wish there was a little more uh, Despa because I love that character. He's hilarious. Um, and I love that he's the only one that didn't get like full fledged magical powers. Yeah, of the three, but, but he's the one that got gave Boji his uh, training. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and I I love uh, you know I I was really conflicted about Despa, uh, <laughs> but his con his conflict with um Domus and that whole scene was oh, that's really hot. well done. Yeah. So the king. Hmm. Um, yeah, I love these guys. Desha was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed the, the staircase confrontation that you were pointing out. I also enjoyed how the character is portrayed. Basically, he's, he's so powerful, inherited all this power from his godfather, <laughs> like literally his godfather. Um, <laughs> and, and yet he is choosing to be good. And, um, of course that begs the question and the anime doesn't really explain but if the powers coming from a god and the god is evil, did the powers make the god evil? Was it, you know, great power corrupts greatly, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> but uh, but he is not corrupted yet, given the, the end sequence, maybe he will be. Um, but but he's a very interesting character. He's very agreeable when Despa uh, gives him ideas or voices different strategies that they might take which i didn't expect i thought there would be a lot more bickering back and forth between them but they they get along pretty well you know in the first half we we saw his re, his reaction he's very spiteful of his brother but but they get along very well uh, at least they tactically perform well strategically perform well um despa was his entertaining self um and oaken fascinating character um silly a little bit like okay his laughter cracked me up so much <laughs> like, like he's he's just constantly got this <laughs> what's that dog like the red baron dog he's he's like doing that laugh mutley. Right? It's mutley isn't it yeah i think so mutley and 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 he's he's also makes other noises that are similar right implying that there's some kind of like damage to his throat or something like he can't speak anymore. Everything he makes is just these rasping sounds, which is very weird since he's immortal and heals from everything. So how could there be any injuries? Uh, very, very weird. Um, I love the resolution to dealing with him as a bad guy. Fantastic. Um, and one, one of the other things that, okay, so, so you mentioned Jason, the idea of like watching his descent into essentially madness. Um, and it would be a slow descent. I, I am so confused. I'll put it that way. I'm so confused about why he became evil, right? <laughs> like, like I totally get it that he got immortality and maybe that's that why is, we need this anime. I'm that, telling you. 
Yeah, exactly. It would explain <laughs> it, maybe. And maybe I'm sure that there must be some implicit curse that comes along with immortality because the 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 Godfather was trying to come up with immortality and but the, the anime doesn't say this. Instead, it talks about how um, the god is evil, and so um, this this Godfather, and so they're rising up to get rid of him because he's such a villain, and and so if anything, I would expect Des Ha to be the one because he gained the power to be evil. So to have the immortality take this character that's like a paragon and turn him into this horrible sadist is extremely confusing to me because that's basically just Wolverine. And saying, oh, Wolverine's lived so long, you know, he's obviously going to go kill everybody now. <laughs> Maybe they started at the place of, hey, we need two mute characters to fight in some of the final battles. So yes. let's build off that. And then, they, and then they can cry. <laughs> and everybody around them will cry. <laughs> and everything will be expressed through tears <laughs> and wailing. It's because he can't have kids. He can't have what? He can't have kids. That's why he's crazy. Oh... That's an interesting idea. Um, it, it, it it's very much like this isn't like real world rules. On it. this is very <laughs> much in this you in this world mm. having the ability to have offspring means you have to keep like your humanity to raise them. That's how you extend your life uh, is by okay. raising offspring, and so you need empathy and and humanity to be able to do that. Uh, if you can't have kids then you have no need for that and your mind gets rid of them and then you are just a crazy psychopath is what despa posits now i also would like to point out this anime lied to us about these characters because while desha doesn't like his face and despa is handsome that is not the reason for their falling out we see their falling out and it had to do with um child mm. murder yeah and wartime mm -hmm. and and so and i wonder if like even Des desha broke his statue because he feels shame over that act like he he knows you know i had to do that but he there's a part of him that feel, you know i think he has a fear of being his father yeah i could and, see that and the, but the enemy straight up lied to us and i think there is like a, i am jealous of you but they they clearly don't hate each other they're very much committed together to saving oaken uh and oaken just being uh venom plus wolverine uh <laughs> was a fun villain. I and I always enjoy an anime battle system that hasn't isn't just a number. I'm a nine, you're an eight, so I win. It's hey, the way my power works versus the way your ability works, you can't hurt me. Yeah, you can break anything, Boji, but I can heal from anything. Whereas then Boss can beat Oaken, but then Boji can beat Boss. I did I, enjoy that and. I thought uh, their battle was great. I did not quite understand my blood can heal iron and steel. Yeah. <laughs> but, and reshape it. <laughs> right. But I, I, I hand waved that for the sake of the character because I really enjoyed these three characters. It's lot. magic. I mean, I just brought it up as magic. Oh, that's fair. Well, don't ever talk to Brandon Sanderson then. Magic has to be grounded in a very specific set of rules. Otherwise, it's garbage. <laughs> but that didn't say it didn't break a rules. You just don't yeah, know. The, you just don't have the rule book. Set. Well, was he immortal? Or is everything that touches him immortal? Yes. Maybe what he chooses to be. <laughs> well, then he could choose to have, like, an immortal child. And then he can have a child. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy says we ruin everything. <laughs> Ruiner! Yeah! Hey guys, uh, Jeremy, tell your wife we're going late tonight. Uh, we're getting to the story now. I know. <laughs> oh, wait, said, first episode? We haven't even got to. Yeah. She says, don't stay up too late tonight. <laughs> so it's a three day weekend. That's oh. right. Uh, all right. Well, I will try to go fast through the story because, uh, I want to leave time for the arguments, which we've already done some of because <laughs> we are addicts in our own right. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, where we left off is, is basically the battle is about to happen. Healing has come back with her red shirts and, and Doshe, and they are going to storm the castle. And Moranjo, the castle. Moranjo has gotten all the, the villains out of Desha's jail and has brought them to her crypt. 
and there's some well why don't we just backstab you right here and i love there's a guy named zoku who's like he's just the bandit leader and he's like whoa 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 we don't know how to get out of this room backstab them later we're we're nice guys trust us <laughs> uh we do learn uh Moranjo can change her um matter she can become diamond or gold yeah she needs to... yeah she basically do alchemy on herself i forgot about the bandit leader that guy was he was pretty fun <laughs> I kept, I was like, oh, this is a one hit, he's down guy. And he kept surviving yeah. the story. And I'm like, hey, he's still yeah. around. <laughs> uh, then we come, Boji is riding with the uh, the Knights of the Underworld. Uh, they're on their way to, to join the battle or maybe take over the kingdom. It's been a little unclear. And they're like, hey, just so you know, even though we said goodbye to him, Despa is also coming. But he has to go ride his horse, and his horse is a fat chonker. <laughs> and I love his horse. He, he might that might be the best character in all of anime. I have to say, I respect the decision that they made to to change the story this way, right? Because they needed it. They needed him to arrive late, or at least right. not to be riding with the retinue. And so to have to come up with, you know, how do we do that in a in a fun and interesting way that fits his character? And his character is such a through line of comedy. It, it was good. I, I'm I like that they that they stuck with that and did give us some something more serious, with an you know, underpinning of tragedy because the real reason he left the army, Ugh. right, right. right. <laughs> that was another thing that Tanya kept saying was I. Every episode, she's like, "They're gonna kill a kid, aren't they?" Like, and and it was it was whenever they were showing Boji and he's like crying and everything, and or then they were showing like something sweet and she's like, "What am I watching?" Like, I don't understand the tone. They're trying to give me this everything sweet and wonderful. It's like what you were saying, Jason, like everything sweet and wonderful. And then, oh, look, there's a kid that is uh, in the in the Messiah pose and the martyr pose that's going to be killed of some uh, some orcish race. Right. And, and she's like, this is just. Yeah. So anyways, why did it? Yeah, I mentioned it because they they jump back and forth between those things. And that's just crazy. I. That's why I still got the Game of Thrones Dark Souls vibe is that the, there is a dark, this is a dark fantasy world presented <laughs> as if Miyazaki and Disney had a baby. <laughs> dark world. Okay. It seems to me like they oh. want it to be a dark world, but they don't yeah. want to commit enough to put any of their characters in real danger. Just Outs characters that were in the past. But outside of main characters, is there, uh, everything else is a dark world. I mean, we have kids getting mutilated, kids getting killed. <sighs> How would Game of Thrones do if nobody died? If the main cast didn't die, but everybody around them did? Wouldn't I think it we need to move Game on. Of Thrones? Are, are there still boobies? Because <laughs> that's well, a major player. That is Game a major player. <laughs> All right. Um, we have to get to my first beef with the story. Okay. <laughs> King Boss uh, comes face to face with the bandits and he lets them take him. And then King Bo, one of the, the bad guys, is like, I'm the king. And he punches Oaken. And Oaken gets up and he takes a couple steps towards him and then he like sulks away. And then Baranjo's like, hey, healing's coming to the gate. I need a bunch of you to come with me. So she takes most of them away. And then Oaken comes back and and cuts, cuts uh, King Bo's wrist ankles and then stabs him repeatedly in the back but he all, all this non like immediately yeah right. yep. his whole thing is he loves to watch you suffer and die so he, and he, we get to see that he has this ability to like stop you in your tracks because that's right. the only way he was Stunned able to him. defeat king Bo is he stunned well, him. yeah he throws a rock. we didn't know yet but yeah right. that's what it was and then zoku Throws the King Bo's body over the wall and declares himself the king. And Oaken on Gary. Oaken's not here to be king. He's here to kill people. So Zoku's the king now. <laughs> Little guy makes good. Uh, meanwhile, we get Domas and Hokuro are, we see them training. They're getting ready to go destroy the underworld gate and while Hokuro didn't get very good with a sword, he's now strong enough to carry a giant crossbow as big as his whole body. So now you said that what we were watching took place in the span of like two days. Why did they bother to train? Yeah, I don't know. 
Do we know what ranking Boss's kingdom is? Well, I know that Boss was seven. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that would imply that he's got a large army. Or that the four people no. that he has are very powerful. Okay, so he does not have a big army. Um, he does have powerful servants, and he they did say he was the most p- strongest king, and that he could raise his true? rank. I think he's purposely keeping his rank low. Hmm. That, that was my theory, based on that he's he knows more about the gods than the other kings. Okay, because like it does not. What kingdom is a not going to defend their king? to the death with their entire army right Mm -hmm. but then b how how is another kingdom stepping foot inside their walls not being challenged by the sovereignty this like that just blows my mind so there is one thing to understand about ranking the kings kingdoms are tiny they are a village city yeah they are a village with a castle next to them he has maybe 20 guards and his big four and a village. And they're just going to allow the troops from another nation to just mosey on in. Yeah. Okay. But who's going who's yeah. to stop them? They're the most powerful army. The, the Those knights are the most powerful army in the land. No, no, oh, I get that. That's all of them. I, oh, I no, get no, that. That's not true. All of them are in the other la- the labyrinth or underground area. Powerful or not, why would they be able to walk in without resistance? I, I guess my point is there's 30 guys in that army that are the most powerful. Like the resistance is like eight guys with slingshots. And, and, and Doma's stick. put up more of a fight than the before actually fighting before actually fighting. He put more of a resistance than anyone else. Right. So that, that, that's, that's, a, that's just a beef with the story for me. Is that we've got another na- sovereign nation crossing into a, a sovereign nation with zero resistance and being able to run jurisdictional authority to find these criminals without co- like doing any sort of negotiations. That's, yeah, but I think you're thinking of like Lord of the Rings, nations would do? Lord, yeah, Lord of the Rings armies and stuff. But you got to think like we have no. like twelve guys. In charge of defense here, and and no. the big four are mostly only like you said, Damas is they're more the like governors. Thing. Yes, uh, okay, Even that's almost too big. <laughs> they're like police yeah. commissioners. Like, if if the yeah. U.S. Army stepped into Canada as a huge force, Canada wouldn't be able to resist them very well. But do you think they're just going to let them walk in to track down criminals? That's no. a good point. But we're we're talking about twenty guys, not armies. <laughs> These no, are... no, but my point is there was no resistance, there was no communication, there was no negotiations. It was Despa's like, I'm going to come in and get these criminals without any, and, and then also I'm going to go kill Boss. To be but... fair, he didn't go past a single room. He went into one room and then went back. No. <laughs> Anyways, I think I made my point. So I, I want to ask a quick question. <laughs> Troy doesn't think so. <laughs> I want to ask you a quick question about that. Is you're just talking about the uh, the the village? You're not talking about down in the catacombs or in the in the uh, the the gate to the underworld, right? Um, because Domus was so, sent to the gate to the underworld. He okay, was basically the resistance. The same there. resistance Domus put up. Mm-hmm. I would have assumed the guards that were there on the surface would have had the same reaction Mm. to another kingdom's forces Mm. attempting to breach their walls. Mm -hmm. So, so here's the only thing that I can say is this is a world where you have uh, Goku and Vegeta, and then you have regular people. Uh, And so the rest of the soldiers are like regular people, right? So they're just going to forsake their king and just let him pass. Also, yeah, because they also, can't do anything but die. They're literally being murdered yeah, when, when the knights show when up. Knights Oaken's show up. literally murdering all the guards. They're all laying on the ground. That's the so. entire military of Boss. Yeah. In okay. that village, getting murdered by one guy. <laughs> and then <laughs> these soldiers show up and they'll be like, yeah, that's fine, whatever, come in. Yeah, please kill Oaken, save us. Right. In principle, I agree with you, but this anime's dumb politically, so... <laughs> 
I think it's just very unique in the way that it is. It's like, hey, I have eight guys. That's my army. That work because I'm a guy who can destroy a hundred guys with the swing of my club. I don't need more than I need guys just to stand out the the door and yell if I need to come. You can only be in one place at a time. Right. You should have a standing army to take care of things, but but this anime doesn't think about what a king would actually have. Like or two steps in front of their own face. Yeah. In this anime, he is not they are not kings. They do not have king kingdoms they they literally just have a village right yeah. because to become a king you li- it's literally like hey i uh i killed that bad guy okay we're gonna follow you as a king cool beans uh yeah build my house over there sweet i'm a king the arrow shots made that place look a lot bigger than what i'm thinking but that's right we can move on yeah yeah he could build that wall in like five minutes be like legos for him <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, Bebin finds King Bo's body, which and his hand snakes, twitches, so you know he's twitches. alive. <laughs> and Hylian reaches the gate, and Miranjo is is there to greet them. And so we get a fight between the assassin beast Doshe versus Doshe, and then these bandits called. Black and red, based on the color of their hair, because this anime is super literal. <laughs> uh, and then Hylian has hired four red shirts, numbered one through, maybe even five, one through five on their helmets. Yeah. <laughs> one of them gets a name when she takes off her helmet, and she becomes like this super important character of like, we gotta save Anne. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but it's to show that that healing is is fine. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, also there's Gig in there. He's a giant orc, and basically they get their butt kicks while uh, and and Oaken's like walking through this, also attacking people. But he's on his way to the village anyway. He like keeps going. <laughs> he stabs a couple people and then just keep mo- moseys on. Uh, mm-hmm. And Doshi gets really hurt. Uh, Healing is trying to heal everybody. Uh, she uses uh, solar flare at one point. She has the mana pouches underneath her giant armor. The one thing I did like about her healing is it doesn't regrow body parts. You get maimed, it's gone forever. Yeah. Even though you can also get a robot hand, but Dorshe has to go with a peg leg. That seems totally unfair. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you ran on his stump just fine. I might just stick with the stump. You were doing good on it. Yep. Uh, it was so weird how like Doshe had uh, all these blades pop out of his clothes and everything, and I thought that was cool. I wonder how long they'll let him <laughs> keep those. <laughs> a few seconds later, Gigan hits him with the hammer and they all break. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I have a problem with this fight because you have established uh, power levels, basically. <laughs> I have to do this. Um <laughs> So, Dosh is weaker than this pack of dogs. Gigan shows up. Uh, Dosh beats Gigan, right? So, Gigan is weaker than Dosh. The snake shows up and beats the pack of dogs, indicating that the snake is stronger than the pack of dogs, which is stronger than Dosh. And then Gigan grabs a snake by the tail and nearly kills it without any effort whatsoever indicating that Gigan is pow- more powerful than the snake. There's nothing really to indicate. Like, at best, the snake was in his prime because he hadn't really suffered any damage. Gigan had been hit pretty hard by Dosh, knocked out. So, um... Maybe it was a lucky hit from Dosh. Right? I th- That's what's so weird, is, like, they had characters that lost to this person, beat this person, basically. And that that's just very inconsistent messes up the uh power levels in my head and that's a pity that True, shouldn't happen. just like are you done with the power levels <laughs> no you guys are just going on about how great it was and there's no numbers or power levels here and i'm like oh yeah there were <laughs> in my head there were <laughs> i think the anime establishes that there there isn't i, I think that's what it says it's like hey a can be b b can be c and c can be a and it's a circle yeah, see, because that's what called contrivance is, you know. No, that's called, 
which I, I don't want to say this anime is realistic. It never is. But I mean, like boxers can beat other boxers that they mm-hmm. have beat. have lost the guys they've beaten. So, you know, it, 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 it has to do with technique and training for sure. But this was literally like immediately. And it was not through technique. It was literally through strength. Gigan picks up the snake and starts beating him on the ground by his tail. That is nothing but strength. There is no technique in that. But we're talking about the difference between getting hit by someone smaller than you that gets a really good, clean shot and an enormous thing that you're not going to miss grabbing. But anyways, I probably should move on. (laughs) Yep. Uh, (laughs) Come on, engage with me. (laughs) We do get the scene of Avius throwing his spear and and saving them, even though he's on Moranjo's side. And Moranjo's like, ah, you betrayed me. And he's like, yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't want them to die. And she's like, well... You need to figure out what you're doing. I'm not really sure what you're doing. I'm not really sure what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> and, we need, and she's like, hey, I think someone's in the underworld. We should head there. Do you know uh, a therapist? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then they re- he, he carries her away, and they get attacked by the r- Red, Black, and Zoku. And they stab or poison Apias? I think they stab him. poisons him. Yeah, they poison him. He oh, poison him. poison in his face. Right, and then they leave him for dead and steal the mirror. Uh, Oaken also starts fighting with the um, Knights of the Underworld in the village. Like I said, he gets there, he's slaying around. Um, and Captain, that's the only name he ever gets, Captain, he uh, he's not allowed to let Boji fight Oaken because Bo- Boji can't beat Oaken. His technique is literally the opposite of what is needed to beat Oaken. Also, wasn't he not supposed to engage Oaken just to hold yeah. him? Yes. Uh-huh. But they do anyways. <laughs> I think they don't have a choice, yeah. Yeah, I don't think Oaken gives them a choice. Uh, mm-hmm. like, like Jeremy pointed out, uh, Matsumata, the giant three-headed, but now currently two-headed snake, <laughs> two-headed <laughs> boss, uh, he, had show, he shows up to help fight uh, Gigan and the Beast. And then Boji shows up. Because Gigan collapses and it's Boji there. I actually had thought Boji was going to show up earlier, and then they cut to Boji and like, oh, there's your castle in the distance. And I'm like... Who's going to save them? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, then the snake showed up. And then I thought the snake would die. And I started to cry. And then the snake didn't die. And I realized, oh, they're not going to kill anybody. Yeah. And that does Nobody. remove the stakes. Which this is a good time to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've said before, you have someone die. Not that to be morbid, but it, it puts stakes in your anime. And I stand by what I said. I believe in that. I just want to also say... That because of the maiming and some of the visceral damage that they do, I thought they pushed it as far as they could without having stakes. It would have been much, much better if there were stakes and people actually died. I still thought it was good. Like when Boji gets stabbed and stuff, I'm like, oh, the, it would be more impactful if I thought he could die at this point. And there wasn't a healer every five feet. But... <laughs> Yeah, I like I like I didn't even think they'd go as far to stab Boji. And so I guess I'm just saying that it was a little better than it could have been. Or, or is, uh, anyway, that's all I'd say. You guys could talk about it. But... Um, no, it. There's going to come a moment where someone that we thought was dead comes back. And hmm. that's when I threw up my hands and I was like, I hate this anime. Um, <laughs> no, we know we know he's not dead. What do you mean we know he's not dead? We saw his hand twitch. His hand twitched. You know, that's the universal symbol of this character's coming back. Seriously. Who who healed him? The snake. The snake. The The snake snake has healing powers? No, they have they have first aid kits. Yeah, (laughs) he's got herbs. (laughs) We didn't see them give him a first aid. Hey, remember when Bebin got stabbed and then he woke oh. up in a snake lair covered in bandages? Uh, did, do you remember the part where we established that Bebin is good friends with the snakes? Yeah, but Bebin had them take Kingbo. Because reasons, lovely. Bebin likes More to reason rescue. to hate this anime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but we I... just lost one because now there there wasn't a character that was supposed to be dead that was miraculously saved. That was all pre-established stuff. Snakes no, not established. Healing. They did not show him bandaged up somewhere and also we're talking in the the span of maybe two hours this is ridiculous (laughs) okay um as far as the stakes are involved yeah it was very frustrating because there are multiple points where multiple people should have died they were willing to kill people off in the 
flashbacks. They were willing to kill off at least one main character by the end, which should have been dead a long time ago. And uh, yeah, so anyways, it, it's very frustrating to watch an anime not commit is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I think it in, entirely rests upon the tone that it set for itself in the beginning. Um, now, is that fair? I think so. When you're writing a story, you know what's come before. You're not writing in a void. You know Game of Thrones exists. You know Dark Souls exists. You know um, whatever stories that you've encountered in anime that have real loss. Um, you know they exist. So you're not writing your story and it's you know purely 100% original out of your head with no influence from anything else. So these other things um, are fair to compare it to. And so if you're going to start with a tone that's similar to these things, it's reasonable to assume that you're going to follow through with that tone. So when you don't, that's kind of what creates the problem for me. If you didn't start with that tone, but you played it safe from the beginning, this wouldn't be an issue for me at all because I would have known from the start you were never going to do this. Um, but because of what you chose to do at the very beginning, you subverted my expectations now. You know the, how much I love that. The tonal shifts, I think, is what really throws me off because in one scene you'll have blood flying across the screen and mm -hmm. people bleeding from their wrists. But in the next scene you've got four or five people crying and hugging and being happy-go-lucky. That mm -hmm. that's, that's jarring. Um I keep hearing the comparison to Dark Souls. Can can I get an explanation around that? Because I get the comparison to Game of Thrones. Oh, so that, uh, you know what? You're, you're kind of right. I had brought that up in the last episode, and that was because of when Boji fell into a hole and then just found a crazy madman king who wants to hang out with him for a little bit and has no explanation. <laughs> that felt like something out of a Souls game to me. Okay. Like, I fell in a hole, I found this... And suddenly there's this bizarre guy in front of me spouting off madness. Oh, no, now he's going to kill me. I should run away. <laughs> uh, it, it was when I said when I said souls, I was more the lore of the world, and how it's just so much bigger than the story that we're viewing through. Mm. Or when a player goes, hey, jump off this cliff. There's treasure down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want I, I do think that you're correct, Troy. I, I like your argument that, you know. A little is better than nothing, so at least they were maimed. Um, I have one defense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I've stated how I feel about it. I actually agree with you guys. I, I, If I was making this anime, if I was making it perfect, this is not the way they would have done it. Mm -hmm. But I think because Boji is the, the king who doesn't kill, if anyone dies, his victory is not absolute. And, and but he's not the one who saves everyone. He literally has to have his dad show up. You could say everyone that healing saves is because he's motivated by Boji. So maybe that is connected to him, but not at the end. At the end, it's it's boss and he doesn't do it for Boji. He doesn't do it because of Boji or inspired by Boji. But that was my only thought is if if any of these main characters die. Boji's achievement as the true king the true hero, the the guy he's got to be, who never lets anyone die. Despite we're in a world where babies get, mm -hmm. maybe, little kids get, get killed or maimed mm -hmm. um, horribly. Boji is is the supreme human giant that will save the day always. I like that ep that explanation as an explanation for what we saw. I think it's a garbage explanation. <laughs> but I I see your point, and I think it may be valid for this particular thing. I well, just don't like it. Uh, however, healing, I would argue, would did it for Dida, not for Boji. She wanted to get her son back. So all the healing and all the things that she was doing was to rescue Dida. Even Apius? There may have been one or two people that were specifically for Boji, but I don't think <laughs> already I'm going to take it, and I'm going to run with it. Okay. All right, let's go <laughs> Speaking of running, let's go to the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's just running on. Um, yeah, what were we didn't, 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 didn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, they tie up Gigan, and healing does a lot of healing of all the people that got injured, including the beast. And Gigan, they, he beats Gigan twice. They tie him up, and then Gigan wakes up and just breaks the rope, and he bows to Boji. 
and uh, Kage's like, the three of us will be best friends. And, and Helene's like, no, if he's a king, you're not friends. You're his subjects. Okay, the two of us will be best friends. Uh, <laughs> and then, but I, so Kage meets Helene and she's like, you better swear to serve my son. He's like, what do you, you think of me? He calls her a, a dumb A. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and then he points, and it's the snake who's like, hey, guys, though, like, he, would you be dead if it wasn't for him? Just so you know, apologize to him for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to say, I was excited and very pleased with the fight between Boji and um, the ogre guy. Yes, yeah, should we talk? Should we talk about Boji's power that he can see the molecular structure of items and break them? Yeah, because we we kind of established that in right. the, but it wasn't explicitly said. And yeah, he he breaks. Um, what is this character's name again? Ogre or Gigan? 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 Yeah, Gigan breaks Gigan's hammer. Mm-hmm. And um, I love that Gigan's like, "Yep, you are better than me. Let's be friends." <laughs> I think also that he didn't kill Gigan is uh, right part of it, right? But beats him twice. Like, and and I think in the spirit of a goofier anime i really like that i think that's cool but in again this world where blood flies everywhere i i wasn't a big fan of it objectively about the fight the fight was good i actually really enjoyed the fight um yeah i think that you can't have these characters that are all like the greatest villains ever and they come in and they're just smashing and destroying characters that well, you we find out he's love. not the villain. We and then you find he out was. he's not the villain. And and he even like immediately does the honorable bow thing to the child that beats him, even though he was also beat by Doshe and he bet he wouldn't do that to Doshe. Um, so it's well, but Doshe didn't beat him twice, again. did he? Well, I know he beat him once. So yeah, I, at see, the bar, Doshi he's got to beat him twice. twice. Oh, I see. I see. Um, and the Nip one, the, the one thing that uh, kind of redeemed that to me was um, seeing his backstory and finding out. Okay, so this race is known for being protective of children. Doesn't really explain why he was gonna smash this child with his hammer, but I guess you could say that he was more willing to serve this child because he's a child. Like there's maybe something affectionate that he has toward him simply that is just a part of his race. It's the only thing I can think of. All right. So back in the village, <laughs> Despa arrives and they're still struggling to beat Oaken and him and his brother have this really nifty. If you talk into your hand that you can hear your own brother. <laughs> they have like Magic walkie talkies. Talkie yeah, it's great. Uh, and they use it to coordinate lightning strikes that Desha sends. <laughs> Uh, it's the only way they can be Oaken is they stun him with a lightning strike and then tie him up before he heals. And so they do that. This spa's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, they decide to take the assassin beast back to the underworld so they can go home now that they're nice and friendly and not being possessed. Uh, so that's and this giant snake will take the queen to a safe place. Oh, yeah, it should also be mentioned that these assassin beasts, as soon as they're all healed, they all get up and bow to Boji. (laughs) Yep. They bow to Boji. It's so ridiculous. (laughs) Ridiculous. Yes. How dare you, so childish. (laughs) Right, it's... Guys, it's a (laughs) fairy tale. Decide what you want to be. You're either a, you know, I turn your dad into a smoothie and make you drink him, or all the animals (laughs) bow to you. Look, no, I disagree. Look, you mix the peanut butter and the chocolate, and it's delicious. (laughs) More like uh, marshmallows and eggs. Ritz and Oreos. That's that's the thing that's about to happen. Ritz and oh wow, interesting. Yeah, one of the one of the Oreo sides is a Ritz. Phoenix Jam and Corpse. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, me, Joe Moss and Hokuro reach the the catacombs where the Gate of the Underworld is, and meanwhile, Desha's army is coming through. And they're like, hey, we're here to get those criminals. And Domas is like, 
I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, yeah, well, <laughs> we're, we're going to take over everything. And he's like, okay, I'm going to stop you. I'm not going to run away because that's the thing I do. And we get this sequence of him beating like three guys and a giant guy, then the whole army. You know, the Hokuro is hiding in the shadows with his crossbow, like, I'm going to help. I'm going to help. And the <laughs> is like, don't help. Don't help. You'll die. And it's, it's pretty going... crazy that this is supposed to be the most powerful army in the land, but Domas is beating them, and he's got a fake right hand. He is on the stairs. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's the stairs. I'm the sure. tactical advantage. Well, he Don't runs... have the high he's... ground, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Desha shows up. Is it Desha or Desha? Desha. Desha. Desha shows up, and he's like, hey, I'll fight you. And, and Domas is like, okay, he's going to swing the club. He's going to swing the club. I got to be ready for the club. And Tessa hits him with a nut shot and then points and laughs at him. Ha ha, you got hit the nut. That, that was might, best. That's a good moment. That was a really good moment. Uh, Hokuro gets grabbed by an assassin and it looks like all things are going to go bad. But uh, Gigget. Everyone. The giant ogre jumps jumps the whole way down, express elevator to hell, carrying Boji. They land. Um, so how lot... does that work, right? Like, I mean, Spider-Man broke her neck by halting her descent very quickly. You know, it's like when you Why... catch an egg. You, get, you give it, you know, the proper amount of... Sure. Sure. I mean... In... <laughs> All right. So... Terrible. <laughs> A lot happens here. First, there's there's Domas and Hokuru who are like, oh my god, the guy the kid we thought we murdered is alive. We're so sorry. Um, Desh is like, hey, there's that criminal that we need to capture. And they're all getting ready to fight. And Kage is, is helping Boji talk. And he's telling him, like, nope, no fighting. Just let him go. It's It's all good. And and we get the backstory of both Desha and and Gigan. So when Desha uh, of the three brothers, they were all born so that their father could get immortality, and their father was this this evil god of the underworld. And they led a rebellion against them, but they had hired a bunch of not nice mercenaries to help them do it. And the ogres had sided with their dad, and so um. Gigan had sided with them, though. But these mercenaries captured a kid of the ogres and was torturing him to bring the, the, the ogres out. It worked, and then they massacred him, and Gigan got really upset, understandably so, and he attacked the mercenaries. Desha arrested him, and then, to appease the mercenaries, killed the kid. And at this moment, Despa's like, Okay, if we're gonna be like our dad, I'm out. I, I, you, we've crossed the line. He's like, no, I, I can't do this without the mercenaries. I had to do it. Um, and then Oaken's like, don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a good guy. <laughs> uh, and so Desha's like, yeah, I understand why you're mad, but it was war. This is what happens, and I'm, I'm taking you down. And Boji gets in his way, blocks his, one of his lightning bolts with his sword. And then Desha calls his brother. He's like, did you train this kid? <laughs> <laughs> How strong is he? He's going to kick your butt. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> he's like, yeah, well, you need him to beat. Because he's really there to beat Boss. He's like, Boss shouldn't be alive anymore. I'm the only one who can who has a chance of beating him. Is maybe now that he's not an actual giant, I could beat him. Uh and and then his brother's like, no, you need Boji to beat him. Boji's the only one who's going to beat Boss. So his answer is, okay, Gigan, you're back in my army. So you're pardoned, but you, you work for me now, and we're going to go back. Then the beasts finally make it down the stairs, and they all bite him. <laughs> and he's like, nope, it's cool, understandable. <laughs> we're leaving. <laughs> and they do. And then... uh they, the um, Domas and Hooker apologize to Boji and he can't handle it. And I actually like this because Boji, I had said like Boji's going to forgive him and Boji like not holding it against him, but also is. It's too traumatic for him. He can't handle it. And he runs away. He runs back up the stairs. 
and and Kage goes after him, and Kage tries to make it a game to make it kind of take his mind off of things. But I I was wrong, and I enjoy that they added a little complexity to not just everyone should be forgiven, which they kind of undo at the end. But whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did like that about this part where he's like conflicted, like. He seems to be on my side again, but he did try to murder me. Um, and I do love Domas's first reaction, like, only my death can solve this. And then he tries to yes. commit suicide. And he's like, I can't even die right. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. That, that was pretty good. Um, and, and yeah, like, the, this anime has some pretty great shining moments. And I think this was one of them. So um, I love what you just described. This is where, if I remember correctly, this is where Tanya left because uh, she couldn't respect any of the characters at this point. Like, Domus is blubbering. He's yeah. blubbering. There's, there's a lot of crying in this. And, and he's not, like, this isn't, you know, I've mentioned it before, a lot of characters cry. They don't just cry, they blubber. A lot of characters blubber. And these are not... supposed to be powerful warriors that, you know, have seen death and can cause death and, you know, ha- have their own ways of handling honor that sometimes comes into conflict. And so they'll have to kill their friends. They aren't blubbering when they're talking about killing each other. Right. They just they just fight and they feel bad and then they move on. They get over it. But he's blubbering for Boji. There's a lot of layers to it, though, man. I mean, you're right. I think I think a warrior is allowed to blubber from time to time, personally. But there's a complexity in the, the middle of a fight, though. Yeah, and he keeps and doing I, it. He does it like four so, or five times. That I agree. One yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's a really big story beat thing that I really hate about this anime is that we keep getting in these really dangerous situations with really powerful foes standing five feet apart. And they're like, oh, let's have this long moment that's literally five to six minutes long where we cry in each other's arms. And Mm -hmm. it's like, that dude's going to stab you any moment, but let's have this touching moment together. I I didn't understand that at all. This one wasn't so bad because they were stuck. I murdered this kid. Now he's suddenly alive. I could see that overriding your, oh, aren't I in the middle of a fight and I just got kicked in the nuts? (laughs) Sure, but I mean, that was... Despa's moment to just like start marching up the stairs and push Domus aside. Like, yeah. Um, okay, they're going to cry it out. Fine. I'm going to continue on with my mission. I don't care about this. I, I just want to go the full context of Domas. It's not just that he murdered this kid. This is a kid that he was tasked to train and make him powerful, and he gave up on him and he completely failed him in every way possible. Sure. And now is seeing him as the most powerful warrior and being like, just a full realization of how much he failed him and then tried to murder him to get away from that. Crying about seeing the kid that he didn't want to kill and attempted to kill come back as this beast of a warrior. Yeah, I can see him having those feelings. Not in this situation, though. Yeah, you hold on to those because you're a warrior. If he is capable of. of Let's have this touching body... moment later once we're out of danger. Exactly. Like, think about what he has to be able to do willpower wise to be as strong as he is, to be able to handle the training that he puts himself through and to be able to withstand pain, like cutting his own hand off. Right. He can control himself very well. Um, Even just the art of fighting to be able to fight well, you have to control yourself. You have to have good willpower. So for him to just lose all control and composure in a situation like that is ridiculous. Um, Plus, not like again every character blubbers so that's not how everybody cries right and that's not how everybody handles regret or pain or suffering or you know sorrow that not everybody does that so have some characters and these are great candidates when they're warriors like this who deal with suffering a bit more stoically or deal with regret a bit more with dignity instead of just breaking down Uh, i think it would have done wonders to make the anime more interesting and more believable if these characters actually behaved like the super four heavyweight hitters that they were instead of you know turning into blubbering messes (laughs) bevan never cries it's true you're right i like bevan bevan best character there we go (laughs) there we go perfect some we agree on 
Yep. All right. Um, was their dad's name Satan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it was literally, uh, I didn't catch it until I was looking at my I notes. Didn't like, catch did, that at all. did I just write the word yeah. Satan and not even notice <laughs> that's his name? I bet I read it like Satan. I bet his name is Satan. <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. Um, Loken gets away because he broke all his bones and then got out of ropes and then healed. Um, we see a little bit of like, hey, he became immortal, drove him insane. We already mostly talked about that. Boji and Kage find Apius, and he's like, hey, guys, wow, uh, you're alive. That's great. Uh, oh, but you're going to stop Miranjo? Well, then I'm going to get up off this ground, and I'm going to stop you. Holy moly, Boji, you're powerful. Okay, I'm going to lay back down. <laughs> uh-huh. You win. Uh, and he's like, hey, please save Save Moranjo. I'm her number one fan. I started her fan club. And 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 they leave him to die. <laughs> I don't think that, I don't think Boji fully realizes he's dying, but it it's like, hey bye. <coughs> Blood. Uh. Uh-huh. Um then we get to so Oaken was called by Moranjo because she had been stolen by Zoku, so all, they they all arrive there at the same time Boji does. Um, and, the, and Oaken's chasing Zoku, and so Boji helps chase Zoku. Or he, like, he's cutting him off. Like, I'm gonna face you, and ignoring Oaken, but Oaken's chasing both of them. Uh, he gets poison blasted in the face, but he's a giant. Thank goodness we established that. Alright, so it wouldn't be. <laughs> Basically, it comes down to we're gonna get an Oaken Boji fight, and we do. And, Moranjo actually, while they're fighting, is like, he should just run away. And then she's like, wait, why did I say something nice? Why did I try to help other people? I want to know that, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Boji is clearly the faster in, and even, you know, is destroying Oaken, but he just heals through everything. And then Boji starts getting tired. And he actually at one point runs away. Because he's like, okay, I'm not going to be able to, to finish the fight. I'll just get to the safety. But as soon as he does, Oaken turns back to kill Zoku. And so I Boji has to that. come back down and uh, keep fighting. And then Kage meets the mirror. <laughs> um, we, so Bebin finds Boss in, in the dungeon. And they start talking. Uh, we see Apius get healed by... Healed by healing, but she was led there by a rat possessed by Moranjo. So Moranjo mm-hmm. took a little bit of time to save Apius. Um, and then all they all go to help with Ogin. And then we get the backstory of Moranjo. And I'm just going to do the whole backstory because they do break it up into a couple episodes. Boss went to a kingdom where everyone's a ma- magician, the, the mage kingdom, and because he's like, hey, those are powerful people to fight. I want to fight powerful people. And he killed this guy, and this guy had a, a wife and daughter, and the wife healed Boss, and so he felt bad, so he started following them around. And so he joined this nation who was literally fighting the gods, and so he's fighting the gods. Well, to beat the gods, they decided to ally with another nation, and this anime kind of goes pro colonialism <laughs> <laughs> um which is a little awkward i kind of wish they had made the the other country because they're basically like hey we came to this country and we're like help us fight the gods and we'll give you nice buildings and technology and and we'll help you grow and make <laughs> you better and it's like, we'll do oh. some nation building out in the desert yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> oh boy that's a little a little rough uh, and then but then it's like, and, you know, it's not their fault. They were just stubborn in their way. But they weren't grateful, and they hated them, and, and then started murdering women and mauling children. I thought it was ah. funny how there was no nuance for this other nation. Right. That, that's, <laughs> that was my thought. Like, everyone else is, like, a little bit of a shade of gray of, like, why I kind of mm-hmm. wish they had been a little... Like, it wasn't really their fault. They had They had their reasons... And yeah, they went too far, but also, you know, victims become villains. Anyway. But that's where, again, in flashbacks, this show behaves very differently than it does with the story it's trying to tell. Like, it tells a different story in flashbacks. And they do still overuse flashbacks. We said that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they definitely overuse it. Uh, again, full backstory here. 
Uh, so after they mauled Moranjo, Boss shows up and finds her, and so he murders everyone, collects all their body parts, takes <laughs> Moranjo to a mage, and gives her <laughs> the mage the bag of body parts and is like, fix her with magic, and here's all the parts you need. And then he starts traveling with her, and then one night she tries to commit suicide. He manages to catch her. They both cry, and then they start. No, come on, it's a suicide attempt. Yeah, go on. After that, that I I get it, but it's just because it happens like every episode. There are several cry fests, and so like warranted. This this one was warranted, but it just I don't know this big giant that like kills everybody and doesn't cry over all the people that he kills. Who did he kill everyone for? This little before girl this. he just tried to save. Even before this, he kills like that's all he did is he'd go around and kill things and kill people. Whoever was strong, he would just kill them. Like he developed a relationship with his girl and his and her mom. Yeah, I know, but the personality that he would have from being this, you know, butcher basically I find it very difficult to believe that that personality would shift so dramatically in such a short time. Even if it was a few years, I find it very difficult to believe. I don't. You've never seen the movie Man on Fire. Uh, it's it's no? very plausible. No, I haven't. Oh, it's, it's the best. It's when I learned that I love the storyline of gruff man finds young child and becomes father figure. I, I sat down to watch that movie like, this is going to be so predictable. He's going to bodyguard this girl. He's going to suddenly, you know, endear her as a daughter, and then she gets kidnapped. He's got to save her. And that's exactly what happens. And it's the most fantastic movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I cried like a baby. I cried like a boss. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not a hardened warrior, Jeremy. You must be. Grow your uh, beard out. All right. So your that tears will dry up. He is. Um, he is. It's true. The, the, the <laughs> best of their backstory is basically from then on they went on adventures and they had fun together. Mm. He he's like, hey, I do. I I used to want to get powerful. And she's like, oh, we could do that instead. So she takes him to a demon, the demon, and then we get to the part where he cursed Boji, and yeah. Now he's actually strong enough with now that he has Boji's strength as well. He goes and he kills a god. Yeah, just because he actually lost to the god, then they went to the demon, and mm-hmm. he goes back and he kills that god. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Boji's so tired, he tied his sword to his hand. We're back to the regular story. Uh, <laughs> Despa and the captain arrive, and they they do the lightning bolt move again, but Oaken shifts his body so that it would run from his arm to his leg without missing his head, so that he won't be stunned. Uh, this shot is in the OP. If you look at the shot of Oaken, he is uh, just got zapped by this lightning bolt and is got the suit from one side to the other, but not the not his head. Um, yeah. So, uh, Captain gets stabbed. So Despa's like, "All right, I'm taking him on." He's like, "Okay, I can do this. I can do this." And he grabs him and then he calls for the lightning, but it doesn't work. He gets stabbed. Uh, also, Boji gets stabbed trying to save Kage. He actually does a move where he, uh, Oaken stabs himself and stabs Boji behind him. And um, before this, I love that, like. I love you too, man. <laughs> Sorry Don't about that. Don't cry I'm now. <laughs> getting falling down the stairs. <laughs> um, no, I. Before this, I love that we get this really long drawn out fight between uh, Oaken and Boji and mm-hmm. Boji's basically beating Oaken, but Oaken just is like shrugging off all of these blows, but Oaken can't touch him. But we see Boji continually getting worn out and continually getting worn out to a point where he can't hold his sword anymore. Yeah. So he has to wrap a piece of cloth around his hand to tighten it up so he can hold it. Um, I thought, again, the fight scenes with Boji against all these other, like, I, they set it up great as far as his power level, and I really enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. I agree. Kage eats Oaken. Oaken. It was a big mistake. Moranja yeah. calls that out. Uh, <laughs> yep. Oaken then slashes his way out of Kage. Um... Which begs the question... You know, all the all these things that he keeps pulling out of his like little pocket dimension that he's got. Where did Oaken go? Mm-hmm. I was wondering that too, because under normal 
like what you would expect from deer deer D and deer and deer D and D or something would be some kind of void bag. So he shouldn't be able to find an exit if you don't want him to. That was weird. Right. Anyways. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh Moranjo. Oh, so Oaken goes and sits down to watch everyone die. Everyone's bleeding just the way he likes it. He's going to enjoy this. Multiple, multiple deaths show. Moranjo possesses Red, who was around for some reason, <laughs> takes his body <laughs> and then uses it to heat. We just see him healing. And then specifically we get. Kage. Specifically Kage. But mm-hmm. we see uh, Despa and Boji. Uh, well, Despa specifically sees Moranjo's memories. Then they they end up they're on a cliff and they're in the river to the afterworld. And Kage is getting on a boat and crossing it. And on the other one side is his mother, and she's like, "Yeah, come on, come here." And on the other side is Moranjo, who's tied the boat to the the shore and is like, "If you go, you can't come back. That's death." And he, what do you want to do? And he's like, "Well, I want to help Boji, but that's my mom. I want to see my mom." And so he ha- and his mom's like, "No, you just come be with me. It's fine. It's it's nice over here." And he's like, "I'm sorry, mom. I I gotta go back. I gotta help Boji." And, and she tries to talk him into it. Tries to talk him into dying, and you know, in a sweet way. Uh, Bo- Boji and Despa cannot be heard. They're like, they get to view it, but they don't. They're not actually there like everyone else is. This is where I thought that. Uh... The spirits from the afterlife might have been um, more malicious because she kept trying to get him to come over there. But I was like, you normally get that from some kind of malicious ghost yeah. that's saying, you know, that's come, true. let's die together. <laughs> you know? uh, Kage comes back and is gets to lift. He runs off into the living itness. Uh, but Maranjo sees her mother and Boji's mother. Now we, at some point, we get Boji's mother's backstory of how she died, which is um, giant arrows from a, an army from afar, directed by Maranjo. And in the OP, there's a scene of Boji's legs and then blood filling up and coming up to his knees. And we get that where he's under his mother, and his mother's like, "Please, just don't let Boji die. Don't hurt Boji." As the arrows are coming into her, and then. The blood just falls from her and pools up around Boji. So Boji was there for her death. And he, he's hurt. That's where he's, we actually had missed the point where he had heard the name Moranjo and was like, Oh, I know Moranjo. Um, this is from, from, but Moranjo gets betrayed and gets hit by an arrow as well and then makes a deal with the demon to live. And that's why she gets put in the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed something and I don't know if I'm right or not. The dude that betrays Moranjo, mm-hmm. is that the same guy who was exterminating the Shadow Clan? Oh, I didn't notice. I didn't notice. He looked very similar. And then the question is, you know, they, they exterminate the Shadow Clan so that they could use their body to make an underground portal. What was the purpose of that besides Moranjo's plans? That's mm. a very good question. Is that all tied together? Yeah. And then who is this dude? Where is he now? And he's in season two. There we go. <laughs> and there is also the question of why did they betray Moranjo? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. All right. Uh, basically, everyone else shows up. <laughs> so everyone's waking up. Boji's still really hurt. Despa's still really hurt. They're bleeding out. And they're trying to get like, hey, the captain has a way to close wounds. <laughs> he has a power. We can just close them. So we need to get him over here. Uh, the snake shows up, but basically what ends up happening is the big four. So, Domas, APS, Bevan, Doshe. Uh, they all arrive and they all take on Oaken at the same time. Domas, they have Domas go first so they can see how his stun power works, which is he throws a tiny rock at you and hits you in a pressure point because he was also trained by Despa, which we see later that, uh, that's why he's so good at fighting. Um, <laughs> The big four do all right at first, but then he remembers, uh, Oaken remembers his training under his brother and he wipes the floor with him. This is one of those points where he has the wherewithal mentally to remember his brother's words of advice and to take them, take heed of those words of advice to help him. He's not insane. He's not crazed. Or because- mostly. Yeah, just not all at the way. least. Yeah, at least most. At least mostly, he's got enough 
mental acuity to think, remember, and apply. So <laughs> there's no reason for him to be just blindly, madly evil. It's ridiculous. I did love that the way they decided to stop him was Dosha's just going to pin him and sit on top of him. Yes. Dude, it was so funny when they're all running towards him and he throws a rock at Dosh and it just kind of bounces off. And Dosh is like, what, did something just hit me <laughs> or something like that? It didn't feel that at all. <laughs> I will say this was my second favorite fight. I, I, I was like, dang, these animators yeah. can go hard with this this, this cool. style. It lets them be a little more fluid, a little bit extra uh, in their Sakuga. And this was a really good fight. Uh, my favorite one j- dropped my jaw, but this one was really good. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Moranjo sees her mom and uh, Boji's mom and basically is like, no, I'm going to be happy with Fosse. You can't stop me. Uh, and the big four lose. Everyone else wakes up. I then... do love that part where she's like, you're you can't come over the side, can you? And yeah. she's just like, <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> Then Boss arrives, and he, he smacks Boji around, he smacks everyone around into a big pile, and then heals them using Dida's mage blood. Uh, so everyone's healed. But he, point, he was like, oh, now I'm at half my power, so I have to fight this guy with half my power. That should be fine. Um, and he just uh, literally pulverizes <laughs> into Goo. I can more. see Jeremy's brain just exploding right now from that sentence you just did. Yeah, that's half my power. But half my power will be just fine. And then the question is, we've never seen Dida do any healing magic. And then how does Boss yep. know how to do it if he was not a mage? Yep. But anyway. Yep. Moranjo taught him. Off screen. Why would oh, she teach something right. he can't do? No, when he was in Dida's body, she taught him. Oh, okay. That's a that's an assumption. During during the <laughs> dance, it was when they were dancing. She's like whispering, "Oh, by the way, you just you flex your pinky <laughs> a little bit." Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Is it plausible it. that he could have figured it out? No, oh, of course. No, it's plausible. <laughs> no way. It's possible. It's not plausible. All right. Then okay. it's not a pothole. <laughs> Boss pulverizes him. Uh, he, he watches him heal, pulverizes him again, crumples him into a ball, shoves him in, creates a giant boulder, puts a hole in the boulder, shoves the ball into the hole, and is like, hey, problem solved, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. This was <laughs> this was my favorite uh, fight. <laughs> Just I love this so solution. Funny. Because yes. I, wasn't under, I wasn't sure what they were going to do. It's like, okay, Thanks. Boss can put him into a puddle, but he can come right back what's what's he gonna do i love that he has to do it like three or four times and he's just like thinking while he's like reforming himself he's like hmm what do i do at this point oh no go back down okay now what (laughs) (laughs) one thing this anime does a great job with details one setting up stuff so we had the scene where he turned a club into a diamond so we know he's really good at compressing things Mm -hmm. that is one of his powers also, uh, I don't think I, I ever saw a shot of Boji from this point on where he didn't have holes in his shirt. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, the animation isn't a detailed an, uh, style, but the details are in there. I, from what I saw, the scars were always there when they need, where they needed to be. Yeah, especially Desha. Mm-hmm. And, and I was thinking Anne. I, I, kept oh, no- yeah, yeah. I kept noticing the, the scar on her throat after she was healed. Yeah. Um, anyway, boss comes up, talks more with Miranjo, and then turns around to everyone else. He's like, all right, I'm this is where he's like, I, it's, it's her or death. You can, you can side with us or you, I'm going to come at you. And Boji stands up to him and everyone else decides to stand up with Boji and gets in front of Boji. Uh, to fight for him because they're like, you know, we kind of let Boji fight and Boji st- <laughs> death in front. And Despa's like, you're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he just beat Oaken, guys. You, you can't handle him. Uh, and then uh, Domas tries to start a fight and Boji just knocks him out because he's in the way. And then Boji fights Boss. And okay, so let me describe what happens really very. And then you guys can complain and then I'll gush. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's our formula. <laughs> So Boji is fighting Dida. 
But uh, the sure. anime presents it in that he's actually fighting boss in this giant form, like running on walls, buildings are being taken out, running up his arm um, in, in a very beautiful animation style. I don't think anyone objects to that. Uh, and then at the end, after he wins, it it, it was Dida the whole time. It, everything was just a representation of fighting his father. Um and destroying his club. And then the, the they go to the next part of the fight where he just beats him in one hit, and, and that kind of ends the fight. So now, go ahead, tell us why that's not okay. Uh, you know, he... Earlier in the anime, he beats Dida, but never actually hurts him. And Dida then, you know, once he's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta fight like a king. And, and they make that point during this fight, is everyone's like, wow, he is fighting like a king, even though it's his own style. Um, and then Dida beats the living tar out of him with that stick. Um, he goes on his adventure. He goes on his training. He comes back. He's now moved his way up the opponents to boss slash Dida. And here we here we are. We get to we just watched boss Dida take out Oaken. Now we get to see them fight again. And this time. Boji is going to best Dida with boss's strength and boss being in there. No, we get this fantastical hallucination inside of Boji's head of things that don't happen in the in the in his reality, and then all of a sudden, oh, his club's destroyed and Dida's falling over. I, that was not satisfying in the least for me. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Especially because every time that Boji scored a shot. It was him stabbing this fictional club, too. So, like, yeah. how many times does he have to stab this fictional club before? Well, just like every other boss, three times. Breaks? Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, like, it, it's it's. I get what they were doing. They wanted to, well, as you've said before, have their cake and eat it too, right? They have Dida. They have Boss. It, it's so cool. We want to have the the most epic fight scene ever even though the story has not been composed for that fight to exist. So we're going to fabricate it and we're going to have that fight scene because we want that fight scene because it's cool. And, and, and it's completely disconnected uh, from the story in its appearance and in anything that happens. It's just, yeah, I, it was not satisfying to me. Troy, like you said, it is beautiful. I rewatched it with my kid. Um, the animation is smooth. Boji's movements are satisfying to watch. Uh, it's a terrible story beat. Uh, the jump through the window gets me every time. That's when my jaw drops. When it goes from dark to light, right when he passes through that window, that's, that's so good. Um, yeah. it's abstract. It's visual storytelling. I it. Yeah, I know. Too. <laughs> Anime. Movies, cartoons, comic books, manga are visual storytelling. Show me something cool. I'm willing to suspend disbelief for it. And I always will be. And I die on this hill. And I know I'm I'm mostly alone there. I've seen movie reviews. I get it. Um, But I'd rather see a car fly through a building with magnets that shouldn't work that way than just (laughs) two cars that slightly connect to each other because they had magnets in them. That's just me. You know, in Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen, when they fight the tree mo- boss and they're doing the switching places, all of that was fantastical. All of that was out of the ordinary and bigger than life. And it all happened within their reality because it was all stuff that was established. This yeah, was just, nothing more than watching someone else's hallucination. And that's why I didn't like it. It was metaphorical. Yeah, there was no reason for it to be metaphorical because nothing else in this anime is metaphorical. That's why I did not like it. So, Mm. All right, so after he's beaten, (laughs) uh, Boss crawls to the mirror. They have this emotional scene. He dies. She, well, she's she's like, someone break me, kill me. (laughs) And and no one will, but she breaks and dies anyway. I thought Boji broke it with his sword. Yeah, Boji did it. He did not. Yes, yeah, he, did. he did. He's standing in front of the glass. Yes. He does his motion. The he glass makes, shatters. Yes, he makes the decision, and it's a decision he doesn't want to make, but he makes the decision to he knows break the as king, and Despa's like narrating this, that he mm-hmm. has to be the one to do it. 
I yep. thought he just he told her, I'll beat the demon for you. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, but that required her to be broken. Like oh. the demon wasn't going to take her unless she died. I remember the story coming up. I did. I guess I just missed the, the context that he hit the mirror. Yep. It's, yeah, it looked like he shattered it. All right, yeah, well, so because he stops boss from shattering it. So there's no one else that could. So two two spirits are now rising up in the sky. The demon shows up. Ah, I'm going to eat you. Eats <laughs> Moranjo. Uh, we find out this is because she has betrayed him twice to a promise that she made, which was that she met him when he was a little cute baby demon. And he's like, yeah, I'm scared because if people make wishes on me, then I turn into a horrible, awful monster. And so she promised him that she wouldn't. And then once for bossy and one, once for boss and once for herself, uh, she has made two wishes on him. And now he's a giant, horrible monster. So he eats her soul. And <laughs> nom, 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 nom. This was uh, a fantastic representation of what hell would look like. Yeah, and then, then we get a shot With the of control hell. of a demon. Yeah, like, this, this is cool. This was fantastic. E- eating the souls, spitting them back out till they reform, and then eating them again uh-huh. <laughs> over and over. That was, that was yep. good. Yeah. Uh, Dida is, okay. is, is, is alive now. He's back. Uh, and did you mention that while well, Dida was in this dark place, like he's been watching bits and pieces of the memories, of Maranjo's, me- oh, yeah, Memories boss has been Maranjo. showing him stuff. Yeah. 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 Little by little. And that the little girl had gotten her hands and face back when she had done something nice when she did the healing. Yeah. No, when she met her mom at some point, it doesn't matter. We gotta go. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure it was a redemptive arc indicating that, oh, she's being redeemed. Okay, look, they attack the demon and Captain cut actually head. cut out the Captain cuts off his head and Despa gets it. And they're going to wish to save Oaken. Remove that was Oaken's the other head. scene I loved. This part right here where the demon's like, all right, tell me your wish. <laughs> <laughs> but. Dida and technically Boji as well are like, hey, we wish for Miranjo to come back. This pissed me off too. And yeah. and the demon's like, done. And then he takes his head back and he's like, nah, 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 you didn't get your yes, wish. And he that... runs away. <laughs> that was so funny. And then Despa has to call his brother and be like, mission failed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, Desha is meeting with the Rick. King Ranker, who's like, hey, yeah, well, as long as you have Oaken in your as part of your group, you're you're at number one. And he was like, no, I don't want to be number one. I'm getting rid of that. I'm, I'm undoing Oaken's power. And then he finds out. He's like, well, might as well be number one. Let's go to the vault. And then the well, guy, like, he he wants to go to the vault to find something to reverse his brother. Mm-hmm. So who was? Uh, I'm a little confused because number he was number two. Who's number two? And boss was number seven. So why is he number one? We don't find out what happened to number one or if he just got re-ranked in that time of year. So off-screen shenanigans. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm guessing that's this, more this moment absolutely infuriated me for a couple reasons. One, uh, the demon was making the demon deal with Des- Despa. Not Di- or Des yeah Despa not Dida. Dida Dragon Ball, had Dragon no Ball rules. Leverage First here. one to say it wins. <laughs> uh, that's not how. Okay. That is exactly Apparently it is how, how Dragon works, Ball works. But that's that doesn't it, it's not logically consistent for one. I wrote um, that. It's my for two, <laughs> if you put in all this work, your captain allows you to get in this position where you can make this wish, and another nation's royalty takes that from you. That is instant war. And it looked like the captain wanted instant war. I was, I was glad. I was thinking this is what they should do. This is yeah. And he was like, "Oh, we'll, we'll just, we'll, 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 we just need some gold then." Yeah, give us some money. That's okay. You've that's been on right, this that's... quest to save your brother for how long? And another nation slights you like this? I mean, they they take the time to address that very, very clearly. Like, not only has Despa seen her memory, so he understands why they're doing this, and and isn't in disagreement with their wish. He also has been getting flashes of his brother telling me, this is not the time to save me. There's another time to save me. And Despa asking for money for everything is very he's in character Despa. with what he's done. Sure. Um, I just, I, I disagree. It's not what? a story that I enjoy. That's how I'd yeah, put it. it. 
All right, so. <sighs> and then the worst part comes up. Dida is like, hey, Mirror, who was on my wall and watched me dress as a kid and slept mm-hmm. in my bed and kind of raised me, mm-hmm. marry me. I forgive you. Everyone, we're forgiving her. Please yep. forgive her. Marry me. And yep. Yeah, it's as, it's as, it's weird. It's as, you know. It's weird. There's no, there's no, I don't think it's, I have one thing to say. One thought that came to me that maybe defends this, because this is insane. It's just insane story beat. I don't get it at all. I thought of Rumpelstiltskin, where they're like, hey, spin gold or we'll kill you. And the lady does it with the help of Rumpelstiltskin three times. And then they're like, okay, you get to be married to, a, to the, to the prince. And just the, the idea of like, you were being threatened to be murdered. And then you go to marriage like it's no big deal because that's just how old fairy tales were. That's how you end land it happily ever after married, even though it's insane that that was. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was your captor forced to make gold. And but yeah, I'll totally marry you. Great. Cool beans. And this is very inspired by old fairy tales. So maybe that's where they're going for here. It's it's stupid. Then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good try, though. Interesting take. Okay. Uh, then Dida's like, hey, everyone, I'm sorry for, like, assassinating some of you and just being a general jerk this whole time. I've learned humility and empathy now. And then APS is like, well, then give the king to Boji. He's like, yep, you're right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him the, king, the crown to Boji. Um, and then... They they kind of grab Boji and throw him up and he dodges them all. They're like, no no, we're doing a good thing. This is a this is a good thing. That and was, they, and they throw him in the air. And I love that they throw him in the air because for the first time ever he gets the viewpoint of a giant, right? Oh, because they threw him up to super high. Uh, and also they all find out that he's been reading lips this whole time. Yeah, and he can read lips the whole time. I love that Domas forgets it instantly and says something horrible in front of him like the next day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. And then uh, and Kage leaves. No, hold on. I, I have a I have a line. I have a bit I'm going to do. I know we're, okay. we're, we're rushing. And then Dida's is like, let's go inside so I can sleep with my wife. He doesn't. That's a that's a movie clue. Um, oh, but, okay. yeah. Dida's is like, let's go inside. And I just thought like he's but he's carrying her. And I'm like, if you're like this horny teenager, you just got your girlfriend like, hey, hey. let's all go inside and go to bed right now. And not once yeah. did Moranjo give consent or say yes to anything. No, oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's just part of the redemption is she has to accept whatever the king decrees. Uh, healing, hugs, hugging both her sons, though, was is probably one of my favorite parts. That actually got me really emotional. Anyway, Boji becomes king. Kage leaves. For no reason. Last argument. Mm-hmm. Here we go. <laughs> no, it's dumb. I, this, I, I don't have really much any other I, argument. I, there was no I, reason for it. He has no basis to just take off at, after a <laughs> moment's notice. This was contrivance at its best. Especially considering how much time they spent together. There's no way he would leave without saying something to Boji. And, and Boji immediately notices that he's gone and starts looking for him. That part you're saying. That is a little contrived. I think... I understand Kage's reason for leaving and that he's like, I don't, I'm a gutter urchin <laughs> street rat thief. He's been and, over this. Has he? Yes. That was, that was part of the development that he had in traveling with Boji. And like, he got over it and went into his bag in yeah, the first half. I, I didn't see him get over that. I didn't see him decide like, okay, I'm good enough to sit in a court of a king now. Because it wasn't really an issue. Like, he was perfectly at home stealing in the castle. He was perfectly at home wherever Boji went, he was going to be. Wouldn't matter Wouldn't matter what Boji was, whether he was a king or not. He was in his side, right? In his court. Yeah. It, sh- it shouldn't matter that Boji suddenly becomes a king, because that doesn't mean he's not Boji anymore. He would have at least stuck around and stayed in the shadows to protect him. And I could see if after weeks of him attempting to be like, hey, buddy, let's hang out or hey, let's go yeah. to the th- something and continually getting rejected, rejected, rejected. And then he's like, fine, you know, maybe I don't belong here. Could have seen that. But this was literally an immediate turnaround. OK, I guess I'm I'm OK with it, especially with healings like, no, he you can't be. you can't have friends. You only have <laughs> subjects 
and Kage being like, okay, I guess my friend's a king now, so I'm not a friend and I'm just a thief and I'm going to go out and start a new life and be a good person like he taught me. I was fine with it. This, this, um, I remember Tanya looked over and she's like, it's still going. <laughs> it's, it's still going because she, I made her watch like the fight scene with boss. I was like, this is pretty cool looking. And she's like, oh, okay. So that's like the final fight, right? Like that's the end of the show, right? Like, why is there another episode? <laughs> like, what is the point of this episode? Okay. Contrived or not, I actually like where Boji ends up here because Boji sets out, leaves his, leaves the king hood behind, leaves it to Dida and <laughs> joins up with Kage to go on an adventure to found his own kingdom. You're breaking, Jason. <laughs> this entire adventure has been Boji trying to earn the right to be a king, and I feel like he has, but then he's decided, I don't need it handed to me. I can just go make it. I am that. I am good enough to make my own kingdom. I don't need my father's legacy handed to me. All right. Let's go to final reviews. Stupid. <laughs> Jamie, let's start with you. Uh, um, so the first half of this season was very interesting. It set a lot of, of ideas in motion, had a lot of threat and indications of consequence, and it was going to be really cool. And um, I got a lot of Made in Abyss vibes. And the second half just kind of fell on its face for me. Um, for all the reasons we talked about, I would love to have seen some consequence in the form of, you know, some deaths of characters. It was great that, that there were so many characters maimed, but like you pointed out, Troy, it does kind of seem like the maiming. <laughs> no, right? this, this is my barometer for a good anime. <laughs> um, but many of the maimings were either inconsequential or reversible in one way or another reversible enough so in the sense of a consequence it just didn't feel like there was anything really at stake and that that really hurt um also in the scene where Miranjo was standing at the river and talking to uh boji's mother and her own mother boji's mother said something and i just kind of thought that this was a very good way to sum up the mindset of this anime, which which was um, hate the sin, not the sinner. And and I hear that a lot and I get it. I mean, I understand the sentiment, but that's in the case of a sinner who isn't going to just keep doing the sin over and over again. Right. Like that's why you lock a serial killer up. That's why you get rid of people who are going to commit horrible atrocities like child abuse or murder, things like that, right? You don't um, you don't just blindly say, it's okay, even though you don't feel bad for it and you're not saying anything, you're not asking for any kind of forgiveness. Um, I'm just going to forgive you anyways. That it, That is not going to lead to a good end. Um, but that is kind of what this anime seems to, at least the sentiment that some of the characters in it are pushing. And... I really see it in Miranjo. Um, I really see it in how every character is morally gray and every character is redeemable and they're all underdogs. They're all the victims. And that just, to me, is a very unsatisfying form of storytelling because it doesn't come off as believable. Um, in the real world, sure, everybody thinks that they're doing good or if they acknowledge that they're not and they're really a bad guy, they don't care. So I guess that would be Miranjo. <laughs> um, but, but the point is, yeah, this, this just, I mean, you could just tick, you could go through and just tick boxes of things that I really didn't like about this anime in the second half. Um, so I got to give the second half like a two and overall a two. Okay. Jason. I I gave the first half a three because not only did I see a ton of potential, I really liked the setups they were doing, 
and some of the characters were really interesting. Um, and I was disappointed on nearly all of those in this second half. Um, the uh, oh, and I need to complain. Uh, King Bo comes out of nowhere, even though uh, all the setup for him to heal, he comes out <laughs> of nowhere. Hoo -hoo, I'm gonna release Oaken. Uh, okay, yep. um, there's just so many illogical and just fall on their face story moments that I just I was pulled out of the immersion over and over and over again. Um, the fight scenes were cool. The animation was really good. At first, it was a bit off putting because it almost looked like an early 2000s U.S. animation. But like once you get immersed into it, it it's not bad and you're into it. And then there's just all these moments that pull you out. The crying's a bit much, but yeah, the story beats of that we've already discussed. I got to give this this part like I almost want to give it a one if it didn't have such great animation. But I'll give it a two, and then the whole thing, I'm also giving it a two. I did not like this anime. <laughs> Troy, you're just dying over there. <laughs> madness. We have fallen into madness. <laughs> or you've um, fallen into delusion. One yeah, of the guys, two. I'm giving it a five. Are uh, you kidding? Oh my god. Are you kidding? Yes, oh, look, explain yourself, please. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I acknowledge all, I've acknowledged all the flaws that I found with it that I agreed with you guys and, and argued against the ones I didn't. So yeah, I don't think it's a perfect anime by far. But it does everything that ticks my boxes that I'm looking for. Mm. I found the anime unique, both in presentation and in storytelling. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. Uh, where I've had chocolate and peanut butter before, I've never had chocolate and peanut butter combined like this. I found the characters complex. I found the story arcs presented. I found the themes well explored. I enjoyed the story very much, and even though, like, hey, I don't know why Dida is marrying this 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 character, it didn't ruin my enjoyment at all because the Boji's arc was so perfect, right? I don't understand. Boss was frustrating, but Healing's uh, complexity was totally overrode that. I enjoyed this anime, getting to end. I found the pacing perfect. I I enjoyed myself to the point where I give this a five. So I have to ask you something, um, and I'm not asking you to change your score or anything, but I, I just I'm curious about this. Um, if you list a whole bunch of negative things that are then counterbalanced by positive things, does that not indicate a balance of good and bad rather than a five, which would indicate a balance of just pure good? I guess are our reviews subjective on our enjoyment or on technical level? I definitely think our enjoyment is the most important part of how we score it. I mean, we've had a, some really good anime lately. This is the most I've enjoyed one. I, like I enjoyed, I enjoyed watching this way more than 86. Hmm. Because wow. I, well, while I liked 86, and 86 did a good job with his stuff, I found it... <laughs> Jason's out! <laughs> I, f I found like I had watched 86 before. I, I didn't I didn't find it fresh or new. This was fresh and new, and that does uh, wonders for me. I have never seen Jason so incensed since Kiznaiver. Like, this is the first time. <laughs> <I've seen. laughs> Years. <laughs> uh, I I I want to. You don't have time to get into this. So I want gonna... one. I want one last thing because I want, I wanted yeah. to touch on this and we Please we all do. skipped over. It. Okay, forgive me, Miranja. And a lot yeah. of people complain about this, mm -hmm. and I see this. I also see this complaint over like in Star Wars, like, hey, Darth Vader doesn't deserve to be to, to be forgiven. He you guys are... dies. Yeah, it's okay Spoiler to forgive alert. someone after they die or as they're dying. That's totally acceptable. The act of forgiveness is not about the character being forgiven, deserving it. Because she doesn't. She does not deserve to be forgiven. The forgiveness is a major character arc for Dida, that he was not the kind of character who could forgive and has. Now, I agree, like, hey, what if she starts murdering again? Maybe we should. <laughs> I understand the real world, the importance of justice and how important that is. In a storytelling world, I have no problem with a... what. A basically a mass murder irredeemable character being forgiven by main characters because it shows the strength of the main character, not the lack of deserving of the villain. 
Well, two things then. Number one, I sure hope you're the one that gets to talk to the family members of all the people oh that my this gosh, person Jerry. massacred. I'm talking later. about in a fictional <laughs> world. Sure, in this fictional world where there's fictional <laughs> family members of these poor fictional dead people that this person who was That's forgiven. That's not the argument still. he's making. Yeah, yes, it is. It. But no, he. he well, he's yeah, saying, because he's talking purely forgiveness. He's not talking about consequences. But he you agrees just... there should have been better consequences for Moranjo. He's right. talking about the lesson that the main character learned. This is a very scoped argument. You're kind of going off on a tangent here. I don't really. I agree you with you, but one I think without the other on his argument. But but how can you have one without the other? How can you have this lesson learned for this person where he's forgiving someone who isn't asking to be forgiven nor deserves to be forgiven? How can that lesson be learned without putting those people in jeopardy by forgiving this person in this situation? You can't have one without I, the other. I think you can. I think the character yeah, yeah, can, can be like, I am no longer holding personal grudge against you for the things you've done because I have grown beyond that. Yeah. And then you're assuming that the person who they're no longer holding a grudge against and therefore not punishing, allowing to live, you're assuming that that person is going to react to that forgiveness because the forgiveness was given. No. If they're not going to react, then you have what I just described. So you're assuming that they are going to react to that forgiveness and change. No. Then they're then you're going to have what I just described. This no. person is going to go kill other people. If the issue was that they killed people and then they were forgiven, but they don't change their way, they're going to go kill people. It doesn't we matter. We don't that know about changed this. ways for one and for two. We're talking specifically about the lesson learned. We're not talking about the broader scope of this particular scene. But right. that's consequence. You can't have a lesson learned unless you're taking the opportunity for the consequence to happen. You can in a story. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. This was my second point. Okay. You say in a story, this is totally fine. This is great. Why is it that if you go and you look at all these movies that we have in just like there's tons of them. The hero is never the one who kills the villain, but the villain always dies. Right. The villain always reaches up and tries to stab the hero, so the hero lets go of them. Or the villain always tries to shoot them, so the oh, hero has Hans to spin and shoot them. Hmm? Right, exactly. But my point is that there is an understanding that the consequence of certain actions that villains in stories take is death. They do not come back from it. This is an understood concept in storytelling to the point where it is ridiculously tropey. It is in so many stories. So in the realm of storytelling, this is understood that a character who does these things doesn't get to just walk away. If Darth Vader lives, do you think Luke Skywalker needs to kill him? It depends on whether Darth Vader actually is changing or whether... Luke Skywalker says, oh, so change. how do you know Moranjo didn't change? How do you know she did? I think what matters is the proof that she did not saying that she might have. But we don't have time for that because the anime ended. Um, then you deal with she, the consequence of her previous actions. You can't assume that she did. For the record, Luke Skywalker throws away his lightsaber and decides not to kill his father, whether he changes or not. He has chosen. I am not killing my father. I am not going through with this. That's fine, but the story beat that we are given, he dies. So the the right. universe balances it out. The universe provides consequences. Because movie audiences That's will be upset. Right. Absolutely, because there is there is a morality that is commonly understood. That if you do these horrible things, you have to pay for it. Sure, but that, in my opinion, that was not the point Troy was trying to make. Right. I'm not mad at Luke for choosing not to kill Darth Vader despite him deserving it. We got like if the movie stopped right there, boop, died of no idea what happens to Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with Luke's decision because that is the final evolution of just his character, not the real world consequences. I still think Darth Vader needs to be locked up. I still think uh, Moranjo needs to be locked up. You know, you don't know if she just has a bad day. She starts casting spells again. I get that. I do. I don't have a problem with Dida forgiving her because Di that's what Dida needed to do for his character arc. I think, it, I, I think it's handled badly. I yeah, can agree with exactly. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
I think it goes against storytelling rules, like what you do, what's going to make sure. sense to an audience. But, but that's, that's what they did. did. Right. And I'm saying it's bad. You're but saying Troy it's not. enjoyed it. So okay. he gave it Troy's, a <laughs> Troy's saying it's not. I'm saying it is. These are my reasons. Those are your reasons. That's all. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know. I, I still disagree that. That it's a scope thing. You you can't have one without the other. I I'll argue that all night. <laughs> I, I I a lot of people agree with you. Like there are people who are mad Bron just forgiven. There's people who are mad Kylo Ren was forgiven. Darth Vader was forgiven. That is a common argument. Like they they blew up a planet. Why do they get to be forgiven? Yeah, because the main character needed to to be a better care person. Well, and honestly, I wouldn't have minded if she had shown obvious desire to change like instead of just being stunned with tears in her eyes the whole time where we are to assume that that is remorse and that that is changing and maybe it is but i want something concrete if you give me something concrete then i've got a foundation to build upon why this character is redeemable but you she, don't she started just her redemption it. change when she gave kage advice Mm -hmm. And then she started remembering that her mom says you need to build kindness off kindness and then kindness will be restored back to you or something like that. So mm -hmm. it needs to be and a 24 episode anime to just which get, it is 23. Right. So, so it needs one more episode. It's one more episode. <laughs> right. All right. So the signs were there. She, it was obviously wrapped up real fast. But yeah, it, it's still a bad anime. OK. <laughs> Our next anime of two two five will will be a gem. Uh, the Genius Prince's Guide to Raising a Nation Out of Debt. Twelve episodes. We will be talking about that in two weeks. If you would like to comment on a lot of things that just happened, uh, you can fun. reach us on our Twitter at Baka Podcast, our email, oh, nope, our website, theanimebuckclub.com, where you can there's a contact us, and it actually goes to our email. You can still use the email if you remember it. I'm not telling you all about it. <laughs> uh, or you can leave a comment wherever you found the podcast and it'll get to us. Thank you guys so much for listening. We've been talking for way too long. We hope that yeah. you want to talk back to us. Uh, we definitely could use, I could use some help. <laughs> you know, I have a feeling, I have a feeling I'm not going to get it. Uh, let's go ahead and say goodbye. I, 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 uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> That's we'll see you next time. That's Jeremy's job. Sayonara. I love it. <laughs>